Stadium in Milwaukee. Drama of the 1982 World Series continues. The Milwaukee Brewers and St. Louis Cardinals. They split the two games in St. Louis, and now it's the Brewers who will benefit from the support of 53,000 noisy fans at County Stadium. Let's go up to Joe Garagiola and Tony Kubek. Okay, Dick, the fans will be a factor here. I tell you, last night you saw it on the pregame show some 25,000 in the pep rally. But I think the center of the diamond, Tony, the pitchers, and the hard, just a couple statistics, 5-0, and earned run average 0.62 September and October. But Vukovic, since the All-Star game, 8-2. and two. That's impressive. Well, what we're going to see, not only are they good pitchers, but two of the most colorful pitchers in the ball game. Contrasting styles. Andoar, one of the best fastballs in the game. Vukovic, one of the best straight changes. They are not afraid to display their emotions on the field, for sure. Some silent bats in this series. Well, Ogilvy Thomas, 1 RBI. Hernandez, Lonnie Smith, Hendrick, 0 for 21. No RBI. Boils down to just 3 of 5 now. And I'll tell you, both pitchers fearless. Right now, let's go to the PA announcer, Bob Betts, for the National Anthem. This is just in case the other one fails. And now, would you please rise as we honor America with our National Anthem. Presenting the colors is the U.S. Navy Recruiting District. Frank Charles at the Willitzer Organ will accompany the anthem, which will be sung by a singer and actress who starred on many of Bob Hope's USO tours, Frances Langford Evanrude. the singing of the National Anthem by Francis Langford. We're ready for baseball here at County Stadium. Andohar against Vukovic. We'll be back. We work pretty hard in this town, and I'll tell you, come 5 o'clock, you're pretty beat. But you always manage to catch your second win around 5.05.
best beer for the best time of the day. Miller High Life. Bring the thirsty stuff right here. You've got the design. We've got the beer for what you had in mind. Welcome to Miller Time. Ghost Ride. Have you? Have you driven the total car? Introducing a totally new Ford LTD. Reshaped. Reshaped. Refined. Refined. Redesigned. Redesigned. Inch by aerodynamic inch. From the ground up. The totally new Ford LTD. The total car. Have you driven a Ford lately? Hi, I'm Rick Mundy. Playing high school sports is a great experience for me. Almost as great as that playoff home run in 1981. Today, there are millions of high school students enjoying the valuable experience of playing high school sports. But without your support, high school sports programs will stop. Don't let that happen. Invest in America's greatest resource, our youth. Support your local high school sports programs. The other half of education. Baseball cares. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. This evening from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, NBC Sports presents Game 3 of the 1983 World Series. The American League champions, the Milwaukee Brewers, against the National League champions, the St. Louis Cardinals. Brought to you by Seiko and your authorized Seiko dealers who remind you that people trust Seiko more than any other watch. And by Miller High Life, the best beer for the best time of the day. Welcome to Miller Time. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Gillette Actra Razor, the twin blade that pivots for a close, comfortable shave. A capacity crowd here at Milwaukee's County Stadium, and these Brewer fans are ready for their Brewers. They love them here in Milwaukee. Last night, as you saw, a pep rally here at the parking lot. Some 25,000 people showed up. And there'll be a factor tonight in this big, beautiful ballpark, County Stadium. Harvey Keen, and here come the Brewers. The lineup for the St. Louis Cardinals, Tommy Herr leads off, playing at second base. Obergfeldt, batting second at third base. Keith Hernandez, batting third at first base. George Hendrick will be in right field in the cleanup spot. The catcher will be Daryl Porter. He is batting fifth. Lonnie Smith is in left field. The designated hitter, Dane Orr. Willie McGee in center field bats eighth, and Ozzie Smith, the shortstop, bats ninth. There's the lineup, if you're going to keep score along with us. Behind Pete Bukovich, back in Milwaukee County Stadium, here's the defense, a tricky win that Ben Oglevy, Garmin Thomas, and Charlie Moore will have to battle. Maybe Paul Molitor at third, Robin Young at short. Jim Gatner at second base. Seek with Cecil Cooper, who I think is happy to be back on grass and dirt at first base. Ted Simmons, the catcher, and Pete Bukovic, who wants to pitch to the Cardinals. Pete Bukovic. He's a guy who, you look at his season stats, and you would say, these numbers do not translate to 18 wins, one loss. I'll tell you why. 223 innings pitched. A lot of hits, 234, and then you throw in 102 bases on balls, Joe. That is a lot of men on base, so he will walk some. He's the kind of pitcher who loves to pitch from behind for some odd reason. Probably because he can throw that curveball and change up over almost any time he wants. He's a fearless pitcher, and I'll tell you, if you're interested in statistics, Jim Palmer and Pete Vukovic tied for the winning percentage. Vukovic, 8-2 and two since the All-Star break. Ballpark not as big in the alleys as it was 
back in St. Louis, Bush Stadium. Dick Enberg told you we're back on the grass and dirt. 315 down each line. 392 in the power alleys. 402 in center field. That win should help the left-handers. They can get the ball in the air and pull it. Unless you're a pull hitter, that 315 will really not help you too much. In the slots, 392 and 362, that's a pretty good smash. 54 degrees here, humidity 56%, clear and crisp. I don't know about the forecast, but it is crisp right now. And Vukovic is ready, so is Tommy Herr, and we're set here for game three. Joe, I wonder if now that the Cardinals, with all that great speed they have, people say they need those bounding balls, I wonder if now they will butt a little bit more on this grass, because this grass will deadly. We'll find out. Tommy Herr, so far, one for six, one RBI, a double at 167. Ball one. Right one. Right here. Now it's ball one. I'm going by the scoreboard. I didn't see Kipper's hand. There it is. He kind of gives you that arm and hammer call. He'll put his left hand on the elbow and give you the strike call. So it's one and one. John Kipper from the National League. One ball and two strikes to count. Book of the 18 games that they showed you and had not been for a couple of strange accidents. Sprained his ankle walking down the hill in Kansas City for a Sunday morning start. Missed four or five starts. He's got a little shoulder problem, so he would have won 20 ball games. The one-two pitch. Two and two. Vukovic, very intense once he gets on the mound. You can read a lot of stories about him, but when he's on the mound, he is a serious young man. Does a lot of things, but he's in the ball game. Three and two. So he starts out on the first hitter, her, the style of pitching that he's used almost all year long. The kind that will drive a manager up a wall at times because he, he gets to the point where you say, we better get him out of there. So he's throwing so many pitches and so many balls that he seems to work out of it. There's that change of pace. He took something off, and Robin Young goes out and makes the play. You'll hear when this man comes up to bat, the fans here in Milwaukee, many times in unison, start chanting MVP, MVP. Here is Ken Obergfeld. He's hitting 500 in this World Series, three for six with one RBI, one run scored, a stolen base. Strike. Vukovic goes to the bullpen 18 minutes before the game. He's really got it worked out. He says, I locked myself into a bubble, and I start thinking 60 feet, 6 inches, and that's what he does. One ball and one strike with one out. Two and one. He used to take a lot of time between pitches, but then they told him that if you take a lot of time, your infielders are back on their heels, so he speeds it up. He comes right at you. Left field, in fast Oglevy, he's there. So there are a lot of people who think that the Cardinals are only a good ball club on artificial surface. They actually had a better one-loss percentage on dirt and grass during the regular season. Of course, they play almost three-fourths of their game on artificial surface with the six turfs in the uh, National League. Here is Keith Hernandez, 0 for 7. Here in this series, he's a key, Joe. Keith and Hendrick, who follows, also 0 for 7, 0 for 14 in the heart of your lineup. You've got to get production from your three and four man, and so far the Cardinals have not had that production. One strike to count on Hernandez. One ball, one strike, two outs, nobody on. Vukovic against Andahar. Let up on the pitch, bouncing ball. Gantler has it. One, two, three. And Hernandez is now 0 for 8. 
And so we go to the bottom half of the first. Cardinals nothing. Milwaukee coming to bat. I've got an unfair advantage over these guys. My looks? Are you kidding? I've got the Gillette Atra. They don't. It's got the advantage of a pivoting head. Atra's better than twin blade razors that don't pivot. See, they don't always stay on my beard. But my Atra pivots to keep both blades on my beard longer. I get a better shave. See, close, comfortable. Get the Gillette Atra and get the Atra advantage. So who said life was fair? <laughs> of action watches. Trust Seiko for advanced dual display technology even 300 feet beneath the sea. Trust Seiko for timepieces that display any of six functions with a turn of a vessel. For alarm chronographs that even measure your pulse rate. For the world's most advanced technology, people trust Seiko more than any other watch. Get the best of Seiko watches, the best of Seiko clocks, only where you see this sign. Arcade players, get ready. The new Atari 5200 Super System is here. With a controller so advanced, it plays arcade. Graphics so real, it looks arcade. With arcade hits, you can't play on any other system. No other home video system can touch it. The new Atari 5200 Super System. It's as good as you are. Maybe even better. Next time. Here's how the Milwaukee Brewers will bat. Paul Molitor, the third baseman, seven hits already in two games, followed by shortstop Robin Yount, leading candidate for the American League Most Valuable Player. Cecil Cooper at first base. Those first three men in the order have already been on base 17 times in the series. Simmons with two home runs. Left fielder is Ben Oglevy. Oglevy won for eight in the series. Center fielder Gorman Thomas shared with Reggie Jackson the home run championship in the American League. The designated hitter is Roy Howell. He's 0 for 6 in the series. In right field, Surprising bat from Charlie Moore from August on. And hitting ninth at second base, Jim Gettner. There they are, top to bottom, the leading home run hitting team in the major leagues. And those first three men, all three of them, with over 200 hits, the only men in the American League with 200 hits. Willie Wilson with 194 was fourth. Cardinals defense, Lonnie Smith, Willie McGee, George Hendrick, and over Kelly third, Ozzy Smith, Tom Hurd, Keith Hernandez, Darrell Porter, the catcher. Joaquin Andujar on his last wind-up pitch. Tried to throw the ball about 100 miles an hour. He might have been close. <laughs> he, he really works hard at everything, doesn't he, Joe? That he does. He is fired up, as is Bukovic. And what a year Andujar has had. 15 and 10. 2.47 earned run average. Average is 4.6 strikeouts per nine innings, but 1.7 walks. That's the key. That's ball is high. Ball one. Paul Molitor, who is 7 for 11, a 636 batting average here in this series. With two RBIs, one stolen base, and two runs scored. Whoa. That whoa was not the radar gun. That was Tony because that thing had something on it. That was as good a fastball as we've seen all year. I think one of the extraordinary things about Andor, he different radar guns clocked at different speeds. He's been clocked at 97 one time this year. To walk that few throwing that hard is really something. That it is. Molitor, six-footer, born in St. Paul, now lives in Mequon, Wisconsin. Two balls and one strike. Wild out of play, two and two. Paul Molitor, third with 201 base hits. Robin Young, Cecil Cooper, look at that. Young 210, Cooper 205. 616 as far as base hits, the top three. And in this series, the top three, Molitor, Young, Cooper 15 for 30. Three and two on Paul Molitor. And keep in mind that Andujar has the best walk ratio to National League are pitchers with 200 or more innings. So this would be a key play here for Andujar. A 
fouled out of play. Drew, I would think the biggest job that Daryl Porter has today is to keep Andujar's emotions under control. And if Porter can't do it, Harvey Keane is back to the split. If Porter cannot do it, Hub Kittle goes out to do it. 3 2 pitch. Straight away, center field. McGee going back, 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 near the wall. He makes the grab. Right in front of the 402 marker, Willie McGee hauls in a long drive by Paul Molidor. Ball carried well to straightaway center field. So both pitchers go three and two on the first hitter. McGee played this ball like he knew exactly, you know, like it was his home park. Goes straight back, turns, he found the wall. He's got a chance to be a sensational player. He runs a lot of balls down. He still could be erratic, but he, he's got a chance to be a super outfielder. Here's Robin Yao. Listen to the crowd with the MVP chant. George Hendricks should have no problem. Makes the play, two up and two down. Cecil Cooper, and you'll hear him poop, poop. These fans, they back their Brewers. They love them. Cooper hitting at 333 in this World Series. Three for nine, one run batted in. He has scored a run, has one double. There it is in this World Series, the first three, Molitor, Young, Cooper. That's impressive. Strike one. <laughs> During the season, that's the first one, two, three finish in base hits for any major league team since the 1915 Detroit Tigers. Jay, this whole Milwaukee lineup, you got to walk almost eight guys before you get to the guy that you want to pitch to. There's really no soft spot. I Hopper, Tommy Herr backs up, has it in time. It's one, two, three for the Brewers. So both Bukovic and Andohar work perfect innings. At the end of one full inning, St. Louis nothing, Milwaukee nothing. The biggest dreams. The greatest songs, the simplest joys, stand out from all the rest. For all the best of times, Gallo Chablis Blanc, the extraordinary Chablis that's preferred more, enjoyed more than all others made. From Ernest and Julio Gallo, Chablis the Blanc. Best of all, all the best. We bring you all the best. When I was looking for a small computer, I went to IBM because they know what a small big company means. I wanted data, word processing, and some word data processing. And they showed me a small computer to fit my hour budget. IBM even had a place to learn how to use it. That impressed me. Us. And my good business sense even impressed my girlfriend, Charlotte. IBM. Why did you bring your car to Kmart K-Care? The price is always good. Because the shacks were rotten, we're bouncing up and down, up and down. Quality and honesty. Up and down, up and down. The shocks just bounced. Smooth your ride now with Monromatic shock absorbers at a net price of $9.88 each after you receive a $3 mail-in rebate. Nice and smooth. Let Kmart K-Care take care of you. I feel about Kmart the way I do about the Green Bay Packers. That's the truth. <laughs> Tomorrow on Different Strokes, Arnold plays Cupid, but his arrow goes astray. Who's talking about, Lisa? Then Ricky shakes up the household to get Dad's attention. Silver Spoon. County Stadium is seen from the Goodyear Blimp America. All the way from Houston, the pilot is Captain Tim Townley Wren from Escanaba, Michigan. It took the America 14 hours to go from St. Louis to Milwaukee. So as we watch that first inning, we may have seen the style of pitching in these two pitchers, Vukovic and Andohar, that typifies each league. Anytime a hitter goes from one league to the other, they will say, 
National League is a fastball pitching league, vice versa. The American League is a off-speed pitching league. Well, we may have that today. Andahar, hard stuff, book of it so far, a lot of off-speed stuff. We'll be watching it. Al Lanier is the coach at first base for the Cardinals. And at third base, Chuck Hiller. George Hendrick leads it off. So far in the first inning, Vukovic made 13 pitches. Andujar, 11 pitches. For some reason, you got the feeling this is going to be a real tight pitcher's battle. Two good workmen. Henrik, 0 for 7 so far in the series. Strike one. Ted Simmons, who's behind the plate, has great admiration for Vukovic. Simply said, he's not average. He's got something special about winning. That's ball misses. One ball and one strike. Over the last two years, Vukovic's record, 32 and 10, it's the best in the major leagues, winning percentage of 76. Down the right field line, drifting into foul territory. Nobody can get it. I often wonder if that man in your picture had talked a little bit more to the media or at all, he would have been, would not have been recognized as a better ball player. He's always ran very well. He's had RBI years, home run years. He's a good throwing arm. But goes, he goes get the ball very well in the outfield. He's never really gotten his share of credit. But he's so honest, Tony. He says, just describe the job I do, not how I do it. That's all I ask. He's done it well for a lot of years. Two balls and two strikes to count. Bouncing ball, Paul Molitor, long throw. It's a fair ball. Oh. We got some problems now. They're calling it third base. He's calling a fair ball in the first base. Jim Good. Evans, the third base, the American League umpire, was waving fair. Apparently, Davey Phillips, the first base umpire, American Leaguer, thought he said foul, and he waved it off like there was no play. Well, it's it. going to be interesting what they do with this call. It's going to be a base hit. Well, what was the call? Was the throw there in time? The, the throw from Molitor did pull Cooper off to the inside part of the bag. Now, whether or not somebody is going to have to tell, because Davey Phillips may not have seen the play, thinking the ball was fouled. He's saying he is safe at first base. Here comes Harvey Key, and there's going to be a rubar right here in the second inning of County Stadium. He wants somebody else to tell him what's going on. Jim Evans is the man on the right. He was the third base umpire. He said fair. Davey Phillips, the first base umpire, apparently thought he said foul. So, two American League umpires, a little confused in the calls that they made. He's asking Cooper what he thought, and Cooper will give him the honest answer. Hendrick's saying, I, I thought I had it beaten out, Harvey. He didn't tag it on the bag. He's off the bag. Yeah. The confusion came in very simply when the hands of Jim Evans went up at third base, and Davey Phillips thought he was motioning foul ball. And Harvey Keene says, that's it, I've had it. Here's the play from the beginning. And watch Jim Evans, the umpire. It's right on the line, so it's fair hit. Pass the bag. He's saying fair. He first of all raised his hands in the air, which can, which can be construed as a signal for a foul ball, like the stop play, and then he waved fair. That initial signal may have confused Davy Phillips. Watch the hands of Jim Evans, third base umpire. Hits right about on the chalk. Molitor knows it's fair. So a confusion in signals by two American League umpires. But really the play ultimately was called right. He's at first base because Cooper never tagged him. He might have been off the back. And it was scored as a base hit. 
And here is Daryl Porter, who is four for seven, two doubles, two RBIs. One ball and one strike to count. He's batting at 571. And Porter, before the game, talked to the press, said, I just feel like every time I get up to the plate, I can do something. And he has been doing just that. He's been doing something. Ball he hit the left field the other night was the first ball he hit the left field in four years, he said. Pulls it foul. Well, the fans around the umpires are all shouting, fair, fair. You know, when he got that face hit off Sutton, Sutton said to him as he came into the duck out in St. Louis, and what Sutton was saying to Porter was, nice piece of hitting. I'll tell you, Whitey Herzog, man, is, I think the most brilliant game I've seen in the World Series of the year, the D8, the way he handled his pitching staff. And one of the moves, one ball, two strikes. Hendrick on first missed man up. He started the runner. That's how much confidence he had in Porter. He's holding this time. It's two balls and two strikes. Nobody out. One man on. No score. Top of the second. Porter backs out as they're playing a cat and mouse game with Vukovic. Nobody out. They swung way around on Porter. A lot of room. Straight away center field. I don't know what that could have been all about. He didn't look at the ball, so Porter did not ask if they take a peek at it. Just to straighten out the count. Might have been. Two and two to count. One man on, nobody out. Top of the second, no score. Porter has a big hole to shoot through. A pull hitter between Gatner and Cooper. Well, keep that big hole for him and not run most of the time. Three and two they might do it. Two and two you figured it'd be holding. Let's see what happens. He's holding. Hit in front of the plate. Vukovic will make the play to first base. Easy out. Advancing the second. George Henry. I think Joey probably got the call from Ted Simmons that to go to first base and not go to second. Try for the force out. So here is Lonnie Smith. Lonnie 0 for 7 in this World Series. And throughout the year, he's been the man who got this Cardinal team going at those rallies. He was the catalyst. Henrik at second base, one man out. Henrik, the base runner at second. Vukovic may be talking to him. He does that quite often. He'll stare you down. He'll whoop. He'll holler for foul balls. He'll keep going. To his left, Robin Yount. Nice play. Throw to first is in time. Henrik takes third. That was a picture play. The contrasting styles that we've seen so far at shortstop between Ozzie Smith and Robin Yount. Robin, as you just saw, a glider. Ozzy Smith, more of a scamperer. Probably similar to the style of Phil Rizzuto. I saw Phil at the end of his baseball career. But look at him just glide over, look the ball right into his glove, regain his balance, exactly where Lonnie Smith was. So there are two away, and here is Dane Orge, the designated hitter. He is one for two. Henrik is on at third. Got a runner in scoring position at third base, but there are two outs. Lukovic has it. Should be easy. It is. So that ends the top half of the second inning. And it's nothing, nothing.
Dan Harvey keen can rest assured that he wasn't ta uh, run wasn't taken away from him, although for a moment he thought the fates were against the Brewers. Jackie Stewart, consultant to the Ford Motor Company. And of course it takes a lot of energy for your car or engine to push a bad aerodynamic shape ahead. On the other hand, if you do that, it's a very clean shape and your hand slides through the air very easily, saving a lot of energy. A well-designed aerodynamic shape in a car can push it onto the road to make it more sure-footed and give you better grip and adhesion. Basically, that's what aerodynamics are. And Ford has it now. And now, an exciting message from Burger King. We know you're watching the game, but you're waiting for something more exciting. Ready? Broiling beef frying nearly two to one in the Coast to Coast survey. Not better than baseball? Think about it. Nearly two out of three people chose broiling. Burger King broils. McDonald's and Wendy's fry. Okay, now back to baseball. But the second it's over, everybody up, click off your set, and come on to Burger King. <laughs> You're not going? Who needs it? Well, they know you're here. They've been walking around me. And nobody asked you? Well, let's see what they're missing. There, isn't she beautiful? Devastating. She's going to break a lot of hearts. Can we drop it someplace where they'll find it? Sweetheart, you just leave it to me. If you don't have a sun camera, there's something left out of your life. It's a World Series weekend on NBC Sports. Following the game, be ringside for a USBA title bout. Frank the Animal Fletcher battles James Hard Rock Reed, plus sumo wrestling from Japan, all on NBC Sports World, tomorrow. Near the banks of Lake Michigan, Milwaukee, Wisconsin County Stadium. Nestled below, 53,000 fans. They brought the sweaters and overcoats tonight. Temperature... Predictions are down into the 40s before the ninth inning. No score. The Brewers' first home game, April 1970. They only had a week to change the uniforms from Seattle Pilots to Milwaukee Brewers. I had a chance to broadcast that game. Andy Messerschmidt shut up. The Brewers 12 to nothing. They didn't start well. They had trouble through the middle 70s. But four years ago, they became a winning ball club into the playoffs last year. And now the World Series is back in the Sun City. So from our left field camera, we take a shot of Ted Simmons, who steps into the batter's box. He's hitting at 375, three for eight, two home runs, two runs batted in, and he has scored two runs. Simmons against Andujar. Right, breaking ball. Not only does Andujar have the fastball we've told you about, he's got a good quick slider, throws a fork ball on occasion. Tops in by Huff Kittle, down in the Dominican Republic. One ball and one strike. When Huff starts to talk about the ball players in that hotbed, Cedeno, Guerrero, Ramirez, Linares, Alfredo Griffin, Andujar. 1-1 one, one pitch, pull foul. Huff says that reason for it, great instruction. Let's pause briefly for our station identification. This is the NBC television network. This is Channel 4, KNBC, Los Angeles. Joe Garagiola with Tony Kubek, Dick Enberg, Tom Seaver, and Bob Costas here in Milwaukee's County Stadium. Bottom of the second, no score. Simmons with a count of one ball and two strikes. Wasted the pitch and it's two and two. Andujar, great sense of humor. I like that one line comes from Dominican. He said, in America, one word says it all. You never know. He has matured to the point. At one time when he was striking players out in Houston, Every time he struck somebody out, he would shoot them with a make-believe gun and blow smoke off his finger. And that irritated a lot of people. 2-2 two -two pitch. Outside. 3-2. and two. See, Dick mentioned the cool weather. He is not wearing a sweatshirt on Duhart.
It's pull foul. Because everything is so magnified here in the World Series. And Andujar, like everybody else, big press conferences. There you see him, no sweatshirt. Ask him if he's worried or pressure. He gave quite an answer. He said, the only thing I worry about is staying alive. Because if you're dead, you can't do nothing. Here he comes, 3-2 pitch. Foul tip. Simmons remains alive. Earn run average leaders in the National League. Steve Rogers of Montreal, 2.40. Andahar, 2.47, along with Joe Nicro, who happens to be here tonight. We're both tied at 2.47. Andahar says, I'll take it. Whoa. He threw a 90 mile an hour over to first base. That's one reason. Uh, well, he used to throw balls away doing that. He's settled down a little bit, and, and I'm sure he's very appreciative. He has a first base, and he won a gold glove. If anybody gets on base, he throws the ball over there so hard. First basemen are not usually, no, not sometimes not noted for having the best hands. He can throw it that hard. He almost threw it by him right through the webbing. And that one stung Hernandez a little bit because you can see by the look on his face. Here's Ben Oglevy hitting at 125, one for eight. He has scored a run. Strike one. Over the course of the season, Andrew High was the most consistent Cardinal starter. He was player of the month in the National League for the month of September. He had an extraordinary month of September. He rarely gave up a run. He was 7-0 in his last 11 starts. One ball and one strike with one out. Five wins and no losses. In September this season. Joaquin Andahar and Pete Vukovic hooked up. One ball, two strikes to count. One man out. Nobody on. I don't know what's full move. No, Halloween's just around the corner. <laughs> Practice time. One ball, two strikes. Foul ball out of play. Well, Molitor finally caught up to one of his fastballs in a deep, and he was late. First, Simmons has been a little bit late, and even Oglethy right there was late on to Art's fastball. Hub Kittle, there you see him. Harvey Keene. Down the right field line, in fast Hendrick, he's got it. That ball was well hit. Hendrick makes a nice play. He comes down so easily. You look at a Willie McGee or a Lonnie Smith with those very quick short strides, and then you look at a Hendrick with a loping glide. He's covering just about the same amount of ground, although he's slowed down a step with age. Well, that's why he says, judge me on the job I do, not how I look. Some people say, well, if he'd go all out, that's his style. He is going all out. He makes the play, and that's what counts. Here is Gorman Thomas. Thomas, one for seven. Hitting at 143. Ball one. Gorman Thomas, one of the Brewers who knows something about Andujar. They played on the same team for a couple of years in the Dominican Republic, winter baseball. See some Cooper, the Brewers played against them for a couple of years in the Dominican. They'll all tell you that Andujar has changed since then. The more of a pitcher. Now ball. One ball and one strike. It's power against power. Gorman Thomas, 1979, had 45 home runs. Led the league. 1980, 38 home runs. 1981, 21 home runs. 1982, 39 home runs. Tied with Reggie Jackson for the league lead. One ball, two strikes. 
According to Gorman Thomas, the hardest throwers, that doesn't surprise you. Danny Darwin might be the strange name in there, but baseball people, you would figure that. Nolan Ryan, Rossi, and Gorman. And Gorman Thomas is out on strike, so it's six men in a row. So, as we complete 20 to play, St. Louis nothing, Milwaukee nothing, and Andahar has worked two perfect innings. We'll be right back after these messages from your local stadium. Flash Moonlights is a model. Isn't he gorgeous, girl? And uncovers an extortion plot that could cost a young model her life on all new tips Sunday. Here's good news about Exxon gasoline. Now you have a choice of how you buy it. If you pay cash at participating Exxon stations, you'll get a discount because cash transactions are less costly. But if you prefer the convenience of buying on credit, your Exxon credit card is welcome as always. Either way, the quality of the gasoline is the same. Exxon, quality you can count on. Do you know me? I'm one of the biggest names on two wheels. Three wheels. And four wheels. But being a company president isn't a title you wear on your sleeve. That's why I carry the American Express card. With this, I'm treated like a big wheel. To apply for a card, look for this display wherever the card is welcomed. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. Tom Hayden was one of the people Jerry Brown brought to state government. Hayden was so influential that he got Jerry Brown to appoint his friend Edison Miller to the Orange County Board of Supervisors. Even with Brown knowing that Miller had been charged by Vietnam POWs with aiding the enemy. Hayden supported Jerry Brown for president, and Brown appointed Hayden to an international border commission. Brown and Hayden. Hayden and Brown. It wasn't good for California, and it wouldn't be good for our country. The Glen Campbell Music Show with B.J. Thomas, 7.30 tomorrow. A big crowd here at Milwaukee's County Stadium. And you're looking at the ceremonial first pitch, and that's young 17-year-old Bob Bortholt. He threw out the first pitch here at County Stadium. Young Bob is a patient at Milwaukee Children's Hospital. And the entire Brewer team has kind of adopted Bob. Don Sutton especially visiting the young man. His whole team, they just feel that Bob exemplifies real courage in youth. And he's having the thrill of a lifetime tonight. He threw out the first pitch. So we go to the top of the third inning, no score. And for the play-by-play, -play, here is Dick Ember. Thank you, Joe. Pete Vukovich allowed one hit, the controversial single. Ground hit by Hendrick in the last inning. Works to Willie McGee here in the third inning, no score. They're tied at one game apiece. A pivotal third game here at County Stadium, Milwaukee, as these fans have cheered the return of the series to the city, first time since 57 and 58. Yout will have to hurry and gets in. And as you have pointed out before, Tony, Yacht, whether he's throwing off the right foot, left foot, he glides and makes it all look so easy. I think, Dick, it's something because when he first came out, the first at the age of 18, they originally thought he wouldn't be able to play shortstop. Harvey Keene worked with him as the infield instructor. They were going to make him a center fielder. And Molitor was going to become the shortstop. And look how it's changed. Meanwhile, Paul Molitor has wound up in the outfield. Shortstop, center field, left field. Now perhaps has found his home at third base. Ozzy Smith, he's been dazzling in the field. And has chipped in with a bat, two for seven. From Cal Poly, San Luis Obispo. Quaint community. Near the coast in California, north of Los Angeles. I asked him about his fielding skills. I said, could do anything different? He said, well, I knew I wasn't going to be a very big man, so I was the first one on the field and the last one to leave. Played on the same recreational team in Los Angeles as Eddie Murray of the Orioles. That's a pretty good start for an infield. Kind of lineup unusual. They can do the cards with the DH to have that kind of speed in the eight and nine spots. McGee and Ozzie Smith. Look for those kinds of people to be up front of your lineup ahead of those three, four, and five hitters. Problem down in the left field corner, perhaps with a banner or a light. Well, right in that corner in the league championship series, 
Fan reached out. That's where the controversial play came. When Ogilvy went back. Fan reached out. It was a home run, although the replays, and Larry Barnett, those umpires did a great job. He admitted later, the replay showed him that he called, made the wrong call. A tough call. The kid who picked it out of glove was so quick at it, you didn't see it until they replayed it three or four times. Yelled another chance. And he gets his opposing short stops. Smith on a close call. Boy, Vukovic has the ground ball working. That's seven in a row. You know, Tony, as we watch Young, he got the label about making errors. A lot of errors when he first came up. And he has to get a very fast Ozzie Smith. He didn't get a good jump out of the box because he had to reach for the ball. It was outside. A healthy Ozzie Smith. He's about one step shy defensively and right there. He's got a severe bruise in his thigh. Two outs in the third inning and Tommy Hur, the leadoff man. He popped it short. Her and Obert fell, led off the first inning with a pop fly and a fly out. Since then, everything's been on the ground. So Vukovic pitching in his pattern. Sinkers, sliders, change of pace. There was an amazing statistic I came across on Yount, which is the point I wanted to make. That Tom Flannery of the Milwaukee Journal checked it over three years, and Yount had made only one error from the seventh inning on that cost him a game. That is pretty perfect. It makes you wonder how many Ozzie Smith made over that same period. What do you think? Foul back. Her has had much more success batting from the left side, not only on grass versus artificial turf, but hitting from that left side this year, 294. Right side, only 201. Excuse me, swing, and it's Gantner's chance. Vukovic retires the Cardinals on three consecutive ground balls. In the bottom of the third inning, Milwaukee will send up the lower third of their order. Roy Howell, followed by Charlie Moore and Jim Gantner. Two and a half in the book, no score. Time of the day. Killer highlight. Shoot him. Shoot him. Do you know how I can get this big package to Seattle overnight? Gee, I don't know, Femur. Let's go up and bounce it off Boomer. Gosh, I don't know, fellas. Let's go up and run it by Rizzo. Let's parade this past Pooperman. Let's waltz it by Wimpus. Let's dance it by Dolt. If more people knew Federal Express handles great big packages, even up to 70 pounds, it sure would save everybody a whole lot of trouble. Spoon fork. Spoon fork. Oh, look. Chunky beef soup. And you eat soup with a spoon. Right, Tuttle? See all that good solid food? Chunks of beef, potatoes, and carrots? It's a meal you eat with a fork. Right, Tuttle? Soup. Meal. Okay, Tuttle. You decide. Is Chunky a soup? Or meal? Uh, Chunky's the soup. <laughs> that eats like a meal. Campbell's Chunky Beef. The soup that eats like a meal. Right, guys? Right. A reminder, NBC Sports presents a full day of action on Sunday. NFL 82 will kick it off with a special one-hour edition. All the latest from the Strike Talks. Then it's... NBC Sports Special starting at 1.30 Eastern Time. You'll see championship NASCAR racing. Daryl Waltrip and Bobby Allison battle it out on the Charlotte 500. Plus live boxing, Livingston Bramble battles with James Bubba Boshimi in a 10-round lightweight fight. Capping off the day, Game 5 of this World Series. This fall classic brought to you the way only NBC Sports can. That's all Sunday on NBC Sports. Roy Howell looking for his first... World Series hit, 0 for 6, the designated hitter. Broken bat, chopper to short. And the Wizard of Oz, they call him, Ozzie Smith, has another assist. But Oz spelled A-H-S or O-Z. <laughs> Either way. 
he has a way of throwing that I have seen very few shortstops throw. And a play like that, and of course he's got the great balance, it's almost a snap throw with just from the elbow to the fingers. Watch the way he throws. He gets the ball off the glove hands, he looks at it as he goes, boom. He has such great action just with the just the lower part of his arm. He gets so much on it. And he's so much quicker than extending that arm and letting it go. Charlie Moore. One of the stars of the American League playoff series, and he's continued right on in this World Series, four for nine. Moore with a couple of doubles in those four hits. He turned down a football scholarship uh, to go to Auburn University. Two and zero. Oh. Brewers looking for their first base runner against 29-year-old Joaquin Andujar. Came over from Houston in the Tony Scott trade. And he has been a solid winner down the stretch, eight in a row. Came at midseason in 81 and went six and one with St. Louis. Three and zero. Oh. Now these Brewer fans looking for a chance to explode with their cheers. All four. does not give many free tickets as has already been noted so Daryl Porter out to chat with his right hander I wonder about the mound itself it was interesting when Tom Seaver came out early to the ballpark first thing he did he walked out to the mound and assumed the pitcher's position I said is it a good mound he said yeah I really like it but this is the first time Andujar has had a chance to work on it there has to be some adjustment for any pitcher foreign environment Jim Gantner, 2-4-8 in the series. Brewers with their first base runner were in the last of the third. No score. He just went to his mouth, and he's getting warm. He got the ball back, and while it was on his way to Fernandez, he went to his mouth on the pitcher's rubber, was straddling the rubber, and Kipler's going out right now. I think they give him a warning. You betcha, right there. He threw over, and while Hernandez flipped it back, Ball one. He called it a ball. Okay. Put his whole you know, tips of his fingers in his mouth and he got caught. He said, that's ball one. Why? Kelly Nahard probably feels that he doesn't use that pitch. He wasn't trying to do anything. Just a nervous reaction. But nevertheless, it's in the book. Gaylord says the same thing, doesn't he? Gaylord there. When your fingers come out warped, it tells you something. <laughs> a ball and a strike. Gantner. A threat to bunt, so the third baseman Obergefell is just off the cut of the grass. And right side is open for him if he can pull the ball with Hernandez holding on the runner more. And the second baseman, Hur, swung over near the bag in double play position. Ball two. Two and one. Gantner has excellent bat control. You've got the perfect situation. Two and one of the count. Hernandez, in fact, just motioned out to Andohar. If it's over, it's over. But if not, you concentrate on him and get something on the ball. So you may have somebody moving. We'll see. I would think he would be, Tony, as much time as the batter took. Line drive, base hit. Moore on his way to third. Gander going for a double. And he has it. Jim Gantner, a 295 hitter, hitting in the ninth spot in the batting order. A line double, and the Brewers are in business. Second and third, one up. So two balls and one strike. Moore was not going. Last ball looked like it was out over the plate. Gantner drills, and in the corner, Hendricks. 
really didn't have a whole lot on the throw as Hernandez takes the cutoff. And here's the hitting star thus far. Seven base hits in two games. Paul Molitor. He hit a 402-foot out to straightaway center. Infield in at the corners, back up the middle. Molitor flirting with a home run to lead off the first inning. Outfield plays in just a shade to pull, and with respect. And Andujar, who has the luxury of pitching from the windup if he wants to, has elected to work from the stretch. Misses, 2-0. First base is open. On deck hitter is Robin Young. First take the pick from the stretch. He holds that runner at second. A little bit closer. He might not score on the ball. And you keep that guy in third base from getting the walk and lead in the event that Harvey Keene takes squeeze play with one out. First trouble spot for Andujar, who had retired seven in a row before walking more and giving up the double by Gantner. One away. That's not the kind of swing you want on 2-0 oh, as Molitor could not check back in the foul ball. It's a pretty good pitch when you're behind 2-0 oh, as you look at Moore and Gatner at second. Go to some kind of off-speed pitch. Harry Warner down at third base. Coach a little differently on the dirt and grass from artificial surface back in St. Louis. The players were all commenting, the Cardinals, that the grass is stuck so closely that it's a very fast infield. Some felt it might have been even faster than the artificial carpet. Two and one. Missing away. Even with an outstanding hitter out on deck with first base open, if he does walk Molitor, he's got a chance at the double play. Molitor was swinging two and zero. Oh. Pops it up. Could be a play. Porter. Not enough room. There are some temporary seats in that area in the normal alignment here at County Stadium, a non-playoff seating arrangement. He might have been able to lean in a row and pick it off. Give you an idea of that last pitch uh, as we look at the temporary seats at World Series time. The idea of the kind of fastball that Andrew has, three and one, you know Mouth is sitting out at a good fastball hitter and he's laid out. Almost a collegiate crowd chant. Here we go, Brewers. Foul back and the count remains three balls, two strikes. Moore at third. Gantner with a double at second. One out. This Milwaukee team was shut out only once all year. The best in the major league. They're going to score runs. He got him. He sidearmed him with a breaking pitch, and Molitor chased it. Second strikeout for Andujar. And what a spot for him. will show you, even though his control's been a little bit shaky thus far on Duhart, that he has no fear of throwing the ball out of the strike zone from down at the side, although that might have been with breaking ball in that situation. It'll show you the way Bukovic and this guy on Duhart can pitch. Tremendous confidence in the off-speed stuff. You just want to make sure with that breaking ball you don't get it inside because the natural motion right-handed to right-handed of the hitter will be pulling back from the plate and keep it inside. You're in trouble, but he pinned it perfectly out off the outside end. Andujar on the strikeout, Molitor. Told you, these two pitchers will do some emoting on the mound. So it's up to Robin Yacht with two away. Misses one and one. Young was the best on this hot hitting Milwaukee club in getting the men home when in scoring position. There's the mark, 425. Best on the Milwaukee team. Tommy Hurt 
And the inning is over. So Joaquin Andujar pitches out of trouble. Second and third. One away. Strikes out Molitor and grounds out Young. And we've completed three innings at County Stadium in Milwaukee. St. Louis and the Brewers. No score. Families are learning about home computers. The family with the Atari home computer is learning Spanish, German, French, Italian, the other, no foreign languages. The Atari family is learning three programs teach us to program. The other, we've only one. And while the Atari family learns to play centipede star ribs and soon, E.T., the other learned, we made a mistake. Over a thousand programs featuring the world's most popular games, but sorry, only with Atari. Danny and I are identical twins, but not exactly. I've got an unfair advantage. I've got the Gillette Atra Razor. He doesn't. It's got the advantage of the pivoting head. Atra is better than twin blade razors that don't pivot. See, they don't always stay on my beard, but my Atra pivots to keep both blades on my beard longer. I get a better shave. Close, comfortable. Get the Gillette Atra and get the Atra advantage. Some guys got it, some guys don't. Bob and Sandy Davis needed two incomes to afford the home they wanted. Then tragedy struck. Allstate update. Joint mortgage protection. Sandy died before the mortgage was paid. Allstate Life's joint mortgage protection could have helped pay off their mortgage if either of them died for less than the price of two policies. But the Davises didn't have it. If you both work, talk to an Allstate agent for life, home, and auto. Put yourself in good hands. Valerie Harper is a young VA with a lot to learn. But she won't back down because she cares. She's Pharaoh for the people on the NBC Monday Night Movie. Top of the fourth inning, and on the St. Louis lineup card, it'll be Obert, Fell, Hernandez, and Hendrick to face Bukovic and Tom Seaver. He's looked at quite a few of those in his career. Dick, that's an example of what the manager will keep in the dugout. Whitey Herzog keeps it right up behind him, and it'll have all the information he needs to run the ball game. The lineup, his lineup, the opposing lineup, and the pinch hitters that he has. And you'll see Ramsey's name in the middle there, but it's because he's a switch hitter. And then the names on the other side that Harvey Keene will have for his ball club. So he knows who he has to work, and he knows who Harvey Keene has to use the pinch hits. And they're scratched out. And we'll try and show you, keeping a copy up here in the in the booth and we'll try and show you what uh, a, a, a used card will look like maybe in the seventh or eighth inning if there are a lot of player changes as the game goes on first pitch to Obertfeld is fouled off the reason why the card appeared to be a little wavy in that picture is that in the st louis cardinal dugout right in the runway going back to the clubhouse they have a big heater in there so that was the waves of heat that you saw in front of that card Dick, seven of the nine hitters in the Cardinal lineup today against Vukovic. Back from the left side. Of course, three of them are switch hitters. Obert fell fly to left first time. There's a change. Just missed. One and one. Cardinal third baseman has hit safely in all five games of the three of the playoffs and two series. Two and one. I asked Ted Simmons, Dick, uh, how many pitches does Vukovic throw? He said, I really, I really can't tell you. Twelve? He's, he's throws so many different pitches at different speeds from different angles. There's a change. It fooled Obertfell, and Molitor has it. One up. Brings up first baseman Keith Hernandez. I think if there's one word to describe both these pitches, they challenge him. They will not give in. Underhart did it before. Vukovic has done it twice already. He challenges. Vukovic, he won't win the Bo Brummel Award, will he? <laughs> Hernandez looking for his first series hit. And one of the better hitters in the game. I guess you get the age-old argument with a guy like Vukovic and Simmons catching who know these Cardinal hitters. Who's got the advantage? The pitcher because he knows the hitter better or the hitter because he knows the pitcher? It's something to kind of think about as the series goes along. So far, it seems like the pitcher's. Long run for Oglevy, and it's a foul ball. Oglevy, of course, ran into the wall right into that left field corner at the foul pole in the playoff series and badly bruised his ribs. Now it's 0 and 2. And he got pummeled in the celebration after they beat California in game five when I guess 15, 20,000 people went on the field and knocked down, re injured them. 
It's on his glove hand side, and when he has to reach for a ball, it bothers his ribcage muscle. Vukovic ahead of Hernandez, 0-2. No score. We're in the fourth inning. Oh, there it is. There's that little tricky one where he steps toward first base. Catch that act, Dick? He, he does some strange things. Evans from Boston hit, got a base hit up, and he turned him and stuck his tongue out him one day. It's opposite of a crossfire. He stepped to first and went home. One and two. Hit down the left field line again. Ogilvy, another chance. Nearly as spectacular or as dramatic as Sandy Ambrose a couple of decades ago in Yankee Stadium, but nevertheless a good play. And you can see when he pulls up short of the fence, he'll come out and display a little bit of pain. Nice run. You, I can almost see the catch he made in Baltimore sliding in the left field corner and just staring that ball before it almost hit the chalk line. He is a much improved player. When he was with Detroit, he was maligned. Look at him grabbing his right side with his left hand. It's hurting his swing also. Here's George Hendrick. He has the only St. Louis Cardinal hit. That was that somewhat controversial high hopper to third when first base umpire Dave Phillips thought the third base umpire Evans had called it foul. He had not. And the replays show that Hendrick was safe at the throw in time but had pulled first baseman Cooper off the bat. Two and one. He's been the money hitter for the birds last three years. Three balls and a strike. Lukovic has not walked a man. Let's see what he gives the cleanup man Hendrick three and one if he'll give in. A spinner outside. And Hendrick is on for the second time in the game. Two out. Daryl Porter, the Cardinal catcher, steps up. He was an original number one draft pick of these Milwaukee Brewers out of Oklahoma City. Much like those uh, Oklahoma high school stars that preceded him, Bobby Mercer, Mickey Mantle, they were great football or baseball, would have been great stars in the middle. That guy at the point is at the battle back. Going through the rehabilitation program. Wish our best to Tim Range, who's going through the same thing right now. Young men who get caught in the trap. Lose your time making a lot of money. You have to be smart enough and courageous enough to admit the mistake and try to do something about it and quarter hands and has come back with strength. In many ways, not only physically, but mentally and emotionally. I was talking about it before the game when I asked him about the pressure of the World Series. He put it very simply, there's no pressure here. He said, what I went through before, that was my life. Pitcher's game thus far. That's keeping an eye on Hendrick. Goes. stole three bases on Simmons in game two, but he guns down Hendrick to close out the fourth inning. Oglevy comes in. He made a fine running catch in foul territory, reminiscent of another great moment in World Series history. Yes. They're talking to tell us This house doesn't have 3MV seal weather strip. How much difference could it make? In just one day, it could stop enough air to fill these three balloons. Enough to cut the heating bill more than 20%. 3MV Seal. 
You just pull it out, fold it like this, and stick it in place. It blocks drafts better than brass, felt, or foam. Just one of many products at the 3M Energy Saving Center. 3M V Seal Weather Strip, a great way to fight rising energy costs. And here's your room guarantee. And only Holiday Inn gives you this no excuses guarantee. Everything in your room will be right, or we'll make it right, no excuses. Or that night you stay free. Enjoy your stay. Thank you. You don't get this guarantee from any other hotel chain, not any one of them. And this guarantee comes from every one of us at Holiday Inn to you, because we want to take care of you. We give you a guarantee, not excuses. In Willsboro, Pennsylvania, in 1979, while Mrs. Montgomery's class made a history field trip, history was being made. Commonwealth Telephone and ITT installed some optical fiber telephone lines. Optical fibers carry phone signals by laser light. The cables can be lashed over existing lines, and they can carry more traffic. Today, Wellsboro has an optical fiber phone system in everyday use, and some more history to remember. Man, we apologize. We lost Mel Allen's call of that great moment in 1955. Amros had just been put in the ball game, made that long, long run against Yogi Berra, and they were playing Barron to left center, and then Amrose turned it into a double play to Pee Wee Reese and on to Gil Hodges to double up Gil McDougal. Cecil Cooper, Ted Simmons, and Ben Ogilvy will face Joaquin Andohar in the Milwaukee fourth inning. Still no score. Andohar battling out of a second and third and one out situation in the last inning. Cooper grounded out only at bat. Pass ball for a strike. Day games tomorrow and Sunday here in Milwaukee. Games four and five. Look at that. 1,012 total times on base for, or total bases for those first three men in the order. A lot of the talk among writers coming from St. Louis on the planes at the workout yesterday, they were, they were saying, when can you think of a combination better than that? Well, some came up with it. How about Pete Rose, Ken Griffey? And Joe Morgan, 75-76 Cincinnati Reds. On base percentage was better than that. That's amazing. 419 compared to the 366 of this Milwaukee trio. Of course, the Reds running an artificial surface, and they're different, different kind of hitters. 2-1 pitch. Aimed right at the center fielder, and McGee almost misread it. That ball taking off to center and left center. A golf shot by Cooper for an out. Dick, I think it's interesting the way the defense has changed with different pitchers. Cooper, they had shaded slightly toward right field against most of the pitchers in St. Louis, but with Andujar's great fastball, McGee was playing him a little bit toward left center field. In fact, Lonnie Smith was more down toward the line. I also think they've got a little greater respect for the speed of this uh, Milwaukee club if they realize they're not just guys who go up and just hammer. Simmons, who has two home runs in the series, sends it high to right and playable. Hendrick squeezes the second out. Probably got it up a little bit on the trademark. Even at that, the wind got it just a little bit and drifted it toward right. The wind won't help anything to right field, but to center and sometimes to left, you'll get a little help. It's a flag draped around the staff at the moment, but not blowing nearly as briskly as it was during batting practice when it was starched out toward left field. Ogilvy lined to the right fielder, his first time up. Tomorrow in game four, it'll be right-hander Moose Haas for Milwaukee, and Dave LaPointe, nine and three, goes for the Cardinals. One o'clock Eastern time. Foul back, 0 and two. Grew up in New York City, Roosevelt High School, was an outstanding baseball and soccer star. On cue, right off his foot. Dick, I would think that Ogilvy, we showed him going to that corner left field, 
with a right rib cage injury, a hard throw, all that was a breaking ball. A hard throw, you want to get that right arm ahead, you want to open up those hips and that body to get out in front, may be difficult. He's not the only one playing hurt. Ozzie Smith is playing hurt with a bad injury. Tommy Hurt for the Cardinals may need knee surgery after the, surgery, uh, after the season. Gorman Thomas still playing with a gimpy knee. Looks like football and basketball athletes at the tail end of the year. This is where you just have to bite your lip. Forget about the injury. You fought all season long to be here. You're not going to sit down. And there's one guy hovering that has not played. Yes. Raleigh Fingers. I think we'll see him. Will we see Roland Fingers? Well, I, I think Tom Seaver had an interesting theory. It may be camouflage, just like uh, Keen and the organization, just to let Cardinals know the fingers on the bench. It may change some strategy, and Tom made a very good point yesterday in our meeting. I got the feeling from Whitey Herzog, though, that he doesn't think the fingers will pitch because there have been enough opportunities in the last week or so for him to come in, and he hasn't been used. Two and two. And this is three and two, so... Ogilvy down on the count 0 2, sees three out of the strike zone from Andujar. Well, Halloween is only a couple of weeks away. <laughs> Who's going to be the trick or treaters tonight? Did he go around? Yes, says third base umpire Jim Evans. Ogilvy halfway to first base, stands and stares in disbelief. Third strikeout for Andujar. That's it for Milwaukee in the fourth. Andujar not particularly sharp, but once again, three and two, he looked like he went breaking pitch. In the fifth inning of the scoreless tie, it will be Porter, Smith, and Orge. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Sunday. His kids' money in the bank. Eric Estrada wants to be champion, and Morgan Fairchild can get him there. Honey Boy on the NBC Sunday Night Movie. Nissan Motors Corporation announces 9.9 .9 annual percentage rate financing on any new Datsun truck. That's the lowest financing available from any manufacturer. The lowest in 10 years. 9.9% .9 saves from $1,100 to over $1,800 in finance charges on any Datsun truck you want. Pick your Datsun truck and finance it at 9.9%. But hurry, 9.9% financing is available for a limited time only and only at your Datsun deal. Now that he's running for governor, George Duke Majin's promising never to raise taxes. But as a state legislator, George Duke Majin sponsored, led the fight for, and helped push through the largest tax increase in California history. Duke Majin's tax increase bill raised sales taxes and business taxes, raised liquor and cigarette taxes, and even raised income taxes. In all, Duke Majin's bill raised taxes a billion dollars a year. This November, vote for California. Vote for Tom Bradley for governor. Outstanding horsemanship, Foxfield Jumping Derby, Saturday at 1. County Stadium in Milwaukee. The Brewers' first trip to the series. And Milwaukee is mighty proud and happy about it all. And they all reflect back. It seems like yesterday when you talk to the fan on the street, 57 and 58, it was Burdett and Spahn and Aaron and Adcock and Matthews and Logan and Pafko and Bruton and all the rest. And Tony Kubek, a Milwaukee youngster, had come back home as a New York Yankee. And his first game here was game three of the series, the first two were New York. And all my partner did was to hit a couple of home runs. And another base hit went three for five as the Yankee left fielder that day. A few other positions after that. Yeah, they moved to Casey. Disappointment after all because we lost it in seven. And in the following year, 58, same two teams in the series. And it was the Yankees then who won in seven. Darrell Porter tapped back to the mound. His only trip against Lukovic, who's been tough, just one infield hit. Change foul. It really is a thing of beauty to watch a man like Vukovic pitch a game because he changes off almost everything. He'll never give you the same speed. Started Porter with a straight change. Another off speed fouled away. That appeared to be off the slider. And the thing about it, Dick, it's the same shoulder, head, arm speed action with every pitch and he disguises it so well and you start looking for the off speed something all of a sudden pop same motion bust inside he hasn't done much of it yet first hitter in the second inning 
is also telling you on the mound, I got a lot of pitches, guys. I'm in control of this game. He's sending messages. 0-2 oh, and down and inside. Fans wanted a strike ball from Kibler. One and two. Porter, two hits in game one and two more to game two, including the two-run double that tied the game. That was interesting, the exchange of balls. I, I've seen pitchers throw balls back, but Simmons looked at two or three different balls from the home plate umpire. Did he know what kind of ball that Vukovic likes? Interesting. I think he was giving them back. It's just a feel. Look at that cap. Remember? <laughs> Low. I remember when I got a nice cap, how I would very carefully just put a slight bend in it and make sure that, the, that it was just a perfect round, a perfect arc. Look at that. It looked like the camel stampeded over it. Vukovic had been pulling the string, threw one pitch outside. Porter stands up on the plate quite a bit. He busts him inside. Show your reaction shot from Porter, what he thought. One of those fastballs that came back to John Kibler, the home plate umpire. That says it all. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Lonnie Smith grounded his short, his only trip. Only two base runners allowed by Vukovic. The infield hit by Hendrick leading off the second. The walk to Hendrick in the fourth, and he was thrown out trying to steal. There's a guy I think at the plate is very important to these Cardinals. He was the uh, the igniter throughout the, the season for this ball club, getting on base, stealing, forcing the defense to make mistakes. He hit 307, and he drives this one into the gap in left center. Oglevy can't cut it off, and Smith falls down, rounding first base, and will settle for a double. They call him Skates because he has trouble making the quick moves, and he'd stumble over the first base bag. I doubt if he could have legged it into a triple, but with his speed, he might have. Oglevy struggled going after the ball. We'll isolate on Lonnie Smith. He may have been thinking triple. Watch what happens right here. He slips as he goes from the grass to the dirt portion possibility that he might have gotten a triple but we won't know it's interesting on dirt and grass they may be using different kinds of shoes they use the rubber cleats on the turf it looked like he had the metal cleats i don't know if that had anything to do with him falling so smith a stumbling double with one out here in the fifth inning dane orge grounded to the pitcher is only at bat a man from arcata california beautiful North of California went on to BYU. Brother Garth for Toronto. Show you once again how this city might have changed a little bit to this point. Hallenier egging him on, saying he got a chance for triple, pick up the ball, and left center field is by. He stumbled when he tried to cut the corner. He is wearing spikes. Oh, and one. ball in one strike. Even with a left-hander orange up, uh, with one out, it's easier for that catcher to see the runner if he tries to steal. But Robin Yao has been jockeying back and forth behind Lonnie Smith, trying not to give him too big a lead. Talking to one of the other catchers for the Brewers, they said that one thing Bookman does not have confidence in is pickoff move to first, or if a pickoff play is called at second, he doesn't like to throw, he'll just lob the ball there. That's and if it's in the scouting report, you know it's there, you can take a little more of a lead. This shot will give us the chance to watch the hitter and the runner, and Yao trying to keep him close. Rounded to Cooper. Can't find the handle. Smith will hold it third. It was a tough chance for Cecil. We'll see how they score. Error is the call. So runners at first and third, one out. Cooper goes a long way to his right on off-speed pitch. The ball hits about in the center of his glove. Just gets away, and he can't grab her. He thought he was going to get it after he booted the ball right in there, but unfortunately he had turned, and now he loses the play completely. And that's not like him because he's a good fielder. Won a gold glove. Hernandez has won a bunch in the National League. He had an error. Keith Hernandez in that first ball game and led the two runs. Right, Hernandez has won four and Cooper two Golden Gloves for their fielding excellence. 
Now the infield for the Brewers, tight at the corners, back up the middle looking for the double play. McGee, who can run, he's tough to double up. One out. Hit high and deep to right field, and Moore going back. McGee will touch them all. A three-run home run for rookie Willie McGee, and the Cardinals jump in front three to nothing. Might recall in the league championship series after Willie McGee was knocked down, he hit a home run. Willie, Willie, Willie. Willie, 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 Willie. His first World Series Willie, Willie, Willie. hit is a three-run home run. Here's Ozzie Smith. He figured the long way had already been tried. He'd go the short way to get him. Peel goes down to the third base up by Evans. It's called a strike. Happy Cardinal Nest. They've moved in front 3 0 here with a home run by McGee in the fifth inning. Smith flashes a foul. In the inning, after Porter had struck out, Lonnie Smith, and you called it, Tony, that he's the igniter. He got the Inning going with his catalyst double. Then Ord safe on the air and McGee driving it into the bleachers in right field for the three run homer. Look at the position of uh, Ozzy Smith's hands right there. That's the change that Herzog made. Made him a better hitter. He hit this year, Dick, oh, about 20, 25 points higher than his lifetime average. Of course, artificial surface is part of it, but they feel bringing his hands up higher. He's swinging down. He more line drives and more ground balls instead of pop ups. 2 2. Gets to straightaway center, Gorman Thomas. Two away. In fact, Herzog had a bet with that guy right there. In spring training, he said, for every pop-up and strikeout, you give me a dollar. For every line drive and ground ball, I give you a dollar. Herzog lost $236 this year, happily. You bet. There's the 50-year-old skipper of the St. Louis Cardinals. His first World Series, never in one as a player, nor... As a manager, just missed at Kansas City. Jim Fry had that honor. Gantner takes care of hers ground ball, and the inning is over, but the damage is done. Willie McKee with a three-run home run. Two hits, an error, and no one left. We're at the halfway mark in this third game of the World Series. Four and a half innings in the book, and St. Louis leads by three. Seiko LaSalle. Marvels of thinness, so perfected, so refined, they reach the realm of art. Seiko LaSalle, thin, rich, beautiful. Only the highest quartz technology could achieve such flawless design and performance. Seiko LaSalle, the performing art of technology. See it only at your Seiko authorized dealer. Here's two good friends. Tonight is kind of special. Hi, guys. Well, look who's back. Okay, Paul Bunyan. Let's go watch some of this bird. You always work your guests this hard. You got enough strength left to lift the low and brow? Low and brow? I'll use two hands. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. You know, the work's pretty hard, but the pay is not bad. Oh, have you driven you Escort GT? GT of the family. Now we call your kind attention to the TR-type suspension. Excitement hasn't been neglected, cause this unit's fuel injected. Five speed! Never loud, never rude. Got a win in attitude. Have you driven you Escort GT? Have you driven a Ford lately? The Voyagers find history has run afoul when Babe Ruth considers quitting. Baseball just wouldn't be baseball without Babe Ruth. So they must get the Sultan of Swap to swing Sunday. 3-0 St. Louis. A reminder, folks, that Sports World returns tomorrow. An exciting lineup, including live 
Championship Boxing, Frank the Animal Fletcher against James Hard Rock Green. The middleweight showdown, 12 rounds for the USBA Championship. And then off to Tokyo Sumo Wrestling, 300-pounders and the traditional Japanese sport. Catch all the action tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern Time on NBC Sports World. And, of course, we'll be aboard at 1 o'clock Eastern Time for Game 4 of this 1982 World Series. Think about Andre Arnold at this point, Dick. I don't think he's been particularly sharp with his control. And he's he is just keeps wiping out hitters. Gets behind some, he's gone three and two a few times, and he makes the pitch that he has to. Pitched out of that third inning with runners on the second and third and one out. Dorman Thomas struck out swinging his first time up. Hero of the moment in St. Louis is young Willie McGee. I think he had that kind of power that falls out of here by quite a bit. Yeah, well, there's one of those cases of a man as he matures becoming more powerful. When he was in the Yankee organization, in 78, he hit two home runs. In 80, he hit one home run. 81 at Nashville, seven homers. Had four after being recalled from the minor leagues with St. Louis. Looks as if he's going to be a delightful addition to the St. Louis team. 2 and 0 oh to Thomas, trying to get something started for Milwaukee, last of the fifth. High in the air. Waiting and waiting is her. One away. Better move that blimp a little higher over County Stadium when Thomas is hitting. And the man Musio. Memories in this ballpark. I'm sure he thinks of the great battles with Warren Spahn. What a classic confrontation that was. He only slugged 702 in 1948. Roy Howell. All the famer Musial. Still looking as if he could duck himself into any batting order. Great shake. Went around. And it's one and one. Powell 0 for 7 thus far in the series. Better hitter away from County Stadium this season. Left side to Obergefell. Across to Hernandez. Two away and Joaquin Andohar. The only hit he's allowed, that double by Gampner in the third inning. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is Channel 4, KNBC, Los Angeles. Charlie Moore. Two outs in the bottom of the fifth inning. They're tied a game apiece. Game three of this World Series as it returns to Milwaukee, Wisconsin after nearly a 25-year absence. Dick Enberg, Joe Garagiola, Tony Kubek, Tom Seaver. A three-run homer by Willie McGee of the St. Louis Cardinals, giving them the 3-0 lead, and Ozzie Smith takes care of Charlie Moore, and for the fourth time in five innings, Joaquin Andujar retires the side in order. Five innings complete at County Stadium. The Cardinals lead the Milwaukee Brewers on McGee's home run, 3-0. Who'll last longer, Rick or Dry Idea Roll-On? Give ordinary roll-ons this kind of workout, they'll start to give out on you. They're mostly water, but not dry idea. Watch. The ordinary roll-on here. Dry idea here. Minutes later, when perspiration starts, much of the ordinary roll-on can wash away, but not dry idea. Dry idea has hardly any water, so it goes on drier, stays on longer, keeps you drier. In fact, not before dry idea. If you care about your pictures, you'll flip over Kodak paper. Because for a good look on the front, it helps to have Kodak paper on the back. Kodak paper. It's the only paper to flip over. So to help your pictures look their best, come to a store that cares enough to use Kodak paper. And you'll flip. Just ask for Kodak paper where you see this sign. And start flipping. Dad, it's time to take the rabbits to the pet store. I think I'll rent a trailer. A lot of folks call Jartran when their business expands faster than expected. 
ahead. I think we'll have to get a cup. And right now, you can rent any Jartran truck at a special low price during the week. Ed, I think we'll need a bigger truck. Any size Jartran truck. Ed. Now at a special low price for local rentals. But you'd better hop to it. Bob's Moonlight is a model. Isn't he gorgeous, girl? And uncovers an extortion plot that could cost a young model her life on all new tips Sunday. Out in the County Stadium bullpen area, that's a scrapbook picture. Roland Fingers, now at Milwaukee, Gene Tennis, the Cardinal catcher. Of course, they were teammates. 72, 73, 74 World Series. And Tennis was the most valuable player in the 72 series when he hit four home runs. Fingers was the most valuable player in 74. Of course, was the league's most valuable player and the Cy Young Award winner last year. But doubtful in this series because of that elbow injury. Obrick foul, one ball, one strike. He'll be followed by Hernandez and Hendrick. About that figure, higher on grass and dirt than the turf for Obrick foul. Pops it behind short. Robin Young. One out in the sixth inning. The Cardinals leading 3 nothing. Bring up Keith Hernandez. He's grounded out and fouled out. Five consecutive Western Division championships for Charlie Finley's Oakland A's and three consecutive World Championships going in there. Bando. Jackson, Bando. Campy. North. Mm. Green. Catfish. Odom. Vida. Vida Blue. What a team Charlie Finley put together. What if they had all stayed together? Keith Hernandez. 0 oh, for 9. This is an intense young man who loves to hit, and he is more than hungry for that first base hit. He won't get it on that ball as Gantner throws him out. 0 oh, for 10 for Hernandez. Gantner from Little Eden, Wisconsin. Population of 375. He says we lock up the gates every night at six. No one gets in. Went to school, University of Wisconsin, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, about 90 miles north. Coach Russ Tiedemann, one of the real fine fundamentalists among college baseball coaches. Hendrick, an infield hit and a walk. Yeah, it's been a quiet, quiet uh, Milwaukee crowd since the three-run homer by McGee. Not unlike what happened in St. Louis when. The Brewers opened up 6-0 lead in the late innings. Two strikes now to Hendrick. One mistake by Vukovic, and it's a 3-0 ball game. Andrar seems to settle down, too, a little bit, because he's got 6, 7, 8 retired consecutively, a little bit more around the strike zone, and if he was getting them out, and he was struggling slightly from 4 or 5, what might he do if he stays in that groove? And now with a cushion of the three runs mm -hmm. to work with. Two and two now. Vukovic who really does go out of his way not to look exactly neat on the mound. He feels that's part of his working image. Tough play for Yount. Gets him. Solid throw. One, two, three. Go the Cardinals in the sixth inning. For Milwaukee, trailing 3-0 in the last half of the sixth inning, it'll be Jim Gentner, then the top of the order, Paul Molitor and Robin Young, with the birds in front, 3-0. People say, what Japanese plug should I put in my Japanese car? I say, for short trips, you need a hot plug, help stop misfiring. For long trips, a normal plug. Then I show them this plug with a longer power tip. This gives it a wide heat range. Works like two plugs in one, hot and normal. They say, wonderful Japanese plug. I say, not wonderful Japanese plug, wonderful American plug, Autolite. Autolite? American. <sighs> I've been hearing the so-called sports expert talk about his realistic home video baseball game. Well, I've played real baseball. And I also played the new Atari real sports baseball. And I like it. Because I can sacrifice fly as well as steal, pick off runners. Hey. It's baseball like baseball should be played. And who are you going to listen to anyhow? That other guy who just talks baseball? Or a nice guy like me who lives it?
New Real Sports Baseball, one in a series only from Atari. Excuse me, Some airlines don't let you know where you'll be sitting until you get on the plane. Can we switch seats? Can I sit with my husband? I want to sit further up, but on American Airlines... You can select your seat when you make your reservation, so you know where you'll be sitting even before you get to the airport. There must be some mistake, boss. Our seats aren't together. No mistake, Fletcher. Hey, boss! We're American Sick of the same old thing Saturday nights? Try something more exciting, more daring, more dangerous. Take the plunge with the Devlin Connection. They're scrumptious. Like cheese on pizza. Back at County Stadium, 3-0 St. Louis. Cy Young Award winner three times, Tom Seaver, who's been charting pitches, making his comments on the series. He's been focusing upon Joaquin Andujar. What do you see? They have been looking at, at uh, Joaquin, of course, Carl charting his pitches up here. One thing that's going on that, that I've noticed, now 73% of the pitches that Joaquin has thrown tonight have been fastballs. And there's only, only been three times that the first pitch has not been a fastball. This Brewer lineup is totally, as I look at them and have watched them now in my third game, they are totally fastball hitters. And after Gantner goes up here, they're going to start getting their third look at Joaquin Andahar. The question is, he's got a three-run lead. Can he throw hard enough, long enough to be able to hold a lead against what is primarily a fastball hitting ball club? All right. The analysis of Tom Seaver. Here's Jim Gettner. He owns the only Milwaukee hit, a double to right field, and he has another hit. He will hold a long single by Jim Gantner, and that brings the crowd back into the game, and this is the largest crowd in <laughs> County Stadium history, 56,556. Well, we saw the job that Cott did in game number two in St. Louis. Fair was outstanding, shutting him down, and Souter has had a day's rest. It was yesterday. Paul Molitor. On this day in World Series history, in 1964, Bobby Richardson of the Yankees collected his 13th hit of that series against the Cardinals to set a series record. Lou Brock tied it later in 1968. That's the, one of the marks that Molitor has his eye on with seven hits already. And the Brewer fans want him to deliver now. Beautiful bunt, but it's foul. Here, if he could have caught the grass, he had a chance at a hit. Gantner back to first base. You know, in football, basketball, that number one draft pick is very important, and even in baseball, it's proving more and more to be true. Five of the nine men in the batting order for Milwaukee were picked in the first round. Molitor and Yount by the Brewers. Simmons, the number one pick of the Cardinals in 67. Seattle Pilots chose Thomas in 69. And Royal Howell by the Rangers in 72. And that year, 60, uh, 77, Mahler was picked with some good ones. In fact, there was some uh, discussion. Should they pick Baines or Molitor? Because Beck chose Baines, and they got Molitor, and they both won out. Oh, one pitches in there, a fastball. Two strikes as Andujar. Working from the stretch for one of the rare times in this game. In the first, second, and fourth, and fifth innings. Wind up, no one on base. One, two, three innings. Ooh. One and two. Up Kittle has meant so much to the mechanics of Andoar. When he was at Houston, he would throw from the top, three quarters, sidearm, and sometimes down under. And Kittle said, you throw over the top, there's Hub, over the top or sidearm, and forget the rest. And he's gotten his control since then. Fly ball to center field. McGee can't. And has the first down of the inning. Now Molitor over three. Robin Young will be the better. Another thing Kittle talked about with Andujar, he said one of the problems with most of the young pitchers in the Dominican at that time was they all wanted to be like Juan Marichal. He was such a national hero, and they all used that big high kick delivery. And some just couldn't do it well, and Andujar was one of them. They tried to get him to forget about the kick, just get a natural motion to the plate that you're comfortable with. Yount over two tonight. 
And that could be two. Her, Smith, Hernandez, double play. Is Nazi beautiful? You see him hurdle that runner coming in. No runs, a hit, and no one left as Robin, Robin Yacht wraps into a double play. We've completed six in Milwaukee, St. Louis three, Brewers nothing, right back after these messages from your local station. It's kids money in the bank. Eric Estrada wants to be champion, and Morgan Fairchild can get him there. Honey Boy on the NBC Sunday Night Movie. This is the world as you know it. But let's move 10,000 times closer. Move 10,000 times closer into a car's carburetor and you may find dirt. Dirt that could impede your car's performance. Fortunately, you can wash dirt away before it accumulates. With mobile detergent gasoline, it treats dirt like dirt. Well, Horace, how do I look? <laughs> He's inside out. Presenting the investment that other investments would like to be. The Wells Fargo market rate account. A $20,000 minimum balance gets you stylish money market yield and liquidity, plus the insured safety and convenience of Wells Fargo Bank. Horses! We need horses! The market rate account from Wells Fargo Bank. If you've got small packages, big packages, and in-between packages that must get there tomorrow morning, you could be boxed in if you don't know the one company that delivers them all overnight. Not that one. And not that one. Only Emory AM schedules on-time delivery of virtually any size shipment to most of America the very next morning. For sure. It's the Emory Edge. Any size on time. For sure. The Forum presents Judy Collins tonight following baseball and news. Ozzy Smith, in set, not seeing what you're seeing. He doesn't have a replay monitor. Again, they're coming hard. Smith does what the good shark stops do. He uses the bag for his protection, and he went right at the runner and made him get down. And then just like a ballet dancer, right over the top. And sometimes, if they don't like the runner, they seem to drag that foot across, and then it's a quick trip to the dentist. That's one of the best weapons with two. Low bridge the guy, the other is those cleats. That's right. Top of the seventh inning, the Cardinals three, Milwaukee nothing. Dick, an interesting stat as far as the pitches. Vukovic in the fifth and sixth inning made 28 pitches. Andujar only 13. And Andujar has been awesome with the exception of Gantner has not allowed a base hit. Gantner the only two Milwaukee base hits. Porter is tapped to the mound and struck out. Two and zero, oh. and maybe as important as Andrew Har's pitching is the fact that McGee's home run has taken the life out of the crowd. It's usually very noisy here in Milwaukee, and they've been silenced. Yount. One away. Looked like he pulled the string on that 2 0 pitch. He, he looked did. like the good fastball just a little bit off. He is what one of the pitching books of the Brewers, Cal McClish, calls a back and forth pitcher. He said he's back and forth means he changes speed. He's also in and out location outside and inside. Get to right center, and no one's there. And look at Smith go this time. He's looking for a triple. He's got it. The ball goes in the dugout, and Smith will score. It's four to nothing. Well, Lonnie did it and do it in games one and two, but he is so far tonight. Getting a chance to see the speed of this Cardinal ball club. You see McGee in center field go back deep for a ball off Cooper. You see Lonnie Smith the way he can run. So they show they can run fast in the dirt and grass. They can on the turf. If he gets going, it causes a lot of trouble. Lonnie this time cutting the bag with his right foot. He never used a coach. He's watching the ball all the way. Now he picks up his coaches. He hits a second base bag. 
foul ball as Porter just misses the bag at first, breaks the bat, and go back for a new one. Show you what happens on the relay throw. Chuck Killer saying, get down. Molitor might have been blocked out, and when the ball skidded and may have hit something, it went in the dugout. An error is charged. There it is. Skins off one. His hip, part of his body. And awarded home on the ball going into the dugout. So one out, and St. Louis leads 4 0. Air charge of the relay throw man. Gatner, the second baseman. Orge. Center fielder Gorman Thomas calling. Two out. Sometimes, and Willie McGee up. Sometimes it can be unfair errors. Right there, looked like it was going to be a pretty good throw. Side the sliding Lonnie Smith. Four runs on four hits. The Cardinals have made them count tonight. A double, an error, and a three-run homer by this man, McGee. And now Smith, a triple, and scoring on the air by Gantner. Molitor up tight at third in case McGee should try and drop a bunt down. Look out. Uh oh, that's two for McGee. Another homer. What a day that kid's having. Hit a fastball for the first home run. Looked like something off speed pitch. He may have thrown a change up slider. I thought I noticed after the first pitch way inside, he backed him off the plate. He didn't get quite up to the plate that time, got the ball inside, and he just let it happen. Listen to him. Let's see the location. A little bit up in the strike zone, but he still hit it very hard. Ozzie Smith back to live action, pops it up, and Young takes care of it. The inning is over. But the St. Louis Cardinals, a triple and a home run score, two more runs. Willie McGee, four home runs all season and two home runs tonight. And we go to the stretch half of the seventh inning with a score in Milwaukee. St. Louis five, the Brewers nothing. You may think a big TV picture means a big piece of furniture, but RCA is changing the shape of television. These new ColorTrack 2000s have a big 25-inch picture and include the slimmest cabinetry you can buy. With cable tuning, remote control, and our most advanced color technology, you may not believe them until you see them. Color Track 2000. We'll open your eyes, open your eyes, R-C-A. From the furnaces at Ford, it's Mustang GT, the boss for 1983. Hot new style. New four-barrel carburetor, a five-liter high-output engine. The Boss, the 175 horsepower Mustang GT. One hot piece of American steel. I was known as one of the meanest players in hockey, but I didn't deserve that, right? <laughs> right. I'm just a nice guy who comes in and has a few light beers from Miller with the boys. He pussy cat who brings light because it's less filling and it tastes great. Really, if I was a nasty player, may a lightning bolt come down and strike this very spot. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. Five down here's the first, excuse me, Dick. Right, I was going to say, here's the first pitch to McGee. Get a point of reference. Watch when he pushes him back. Now, he's got him back. Look what, about where he is, even with Kibler's right foot. Now, watch when he comes back in the batter's box. He's a little further back. You'll be able to see Kibber all the way. Yes, he is. He is back. further back, almost like he was looking for it. And he really nails it. That's an interesting thing about uh, part about McGee is about eight years ago, he broke his right arm above the elbow. He got a shot in it. It didn't heal properly. The bone didn't develop. He's got like cartilage or something in there. Dr. London, the team physician, looked at it, decided to do nothing. It hurts him a lot of the time throwing and hitting. In the fifth inning, with a couple men out, Willie McGee. He's got a 
an awkward looking stance from the left side, stands straight up, and look at the knee cock, his timing device as the hands go back, head down and watch the right arm get that bat out in front. That was the first home run on a fastball up in the strike zone. Second home run, giving a breaking ball inside, lower part of the strike zone. Last of the seventh, five nothing, and here's Joe Garagio. And Cooper hits the first pitch, but he hits it foul. Five to nothing, the Cardinals are out in front of Milwaukee. We're at the bottom of the seventh inning, and there you see it. Two hits from Milwaukee. Gantner has both of them, a double in the third, a single in the sixth. Cardinals scored three in the fifth, three-run homer by McGee. They scored two in the seventh. Triple, error, and a home run by McGee. Out of play. Two quick strikes. Joaquin Andohar. Joe, that uh, second home run by McGee tied an interesting record. Home runs in one game by a rookie. Charlie Keller, 39. Tony Kubek, 57. The only other rookies hit two home runs in a series game. Tony hit him right here. I remember that game. Two strike pitch. High fly ball. McGee has room. One out. So I don't know if Willie McGee can develop, continue to develop that kind of power, but what you're looking at in McGee, a guy who can run with his speed, the possibility of 75, 80 bases if he stays healthy, he has a good throwing arm. He's going to be a good average hitter, it looks like, with his speed. He's going to be a 300 hitter. With that kind of power, that, that's a lot of versatility. That's a lot of things building that one man. When he learns the steal oh. bases to become a base runner he's really going to be something he's doing it on raw speed right now here is simmons who is over two low ball one mcgee becomes the 28th man to hit two home runs in the world series game last man to do it was willie akins for the kansas city royals five nothing to score bottom of the seventh simmons doesn't get it one ball and one strike he has not lost anything at his fastball we're in the seventh he that ball very hard Hit me in the swing, and it goes foul. One ball, two strikes. Andahar, when you talk about shutouts in 1982, Steve Carlton led the National League with the most shutouts, six. Andahar and Joe Necro were tied at five apiece. A tough competitor, Hub Kittle, who, well, Andahar calls him Papa, you saw in the pregame show. He has really done the job, and he's become a tough pitcher. Right off his Ow. knee again. He can't move. He's hurt. Andahar is hurt. He is down. Here comes Gene Gieselman. He was hit a line drive, but he's hurt this time on the kneecap. He is in real pain. Doc on it. Andahar hit by a smash off the bat of Ted Simmons. Bob Bowman coming out along with Gene Gieselman. Pitching such a brilliant ball game. And he got cracked solidly. Dr. London now apparently has jumped out of the stands, one of the top men in this field, out to look at it. He continued after he got hit in the League Championship Series game against Atlanta. That was off the shin. This one appeared to get him right in the kneecap, Tony. What a blow as hard as this hits him off the kneecap or just below it. Teddy Simmons. Andujar was involved tailing away from Simmons. It is hit so hard, he just can't recover. He was in a pretty good fielding position right there, too, Joe, but the ball just hit so hard, Simmons going up the middle to see Joaquin go down. And in his follow through, his leg had turned enough so that inside of the knee was exposed. That's one of those deals where you, you almost wish a guy had a poor follow through and follow through crossing over and the ball would have missed him. He is in this tremendous pain as you see by this replay. And it is a doggone shame because, well, as the series goes along, we'll see how he progresses. They're going that to bring doesn't in, look like a very, very good spot. Now they're going to bring in a pitcher and of course he'll be allowed as much time as he needs to warm up. So the man now for St. Louis in the bullpen is Doug Bear. 
He fit so brilliantly in game number two. Hot also off the left-hander. Listen to this Milwaukee crowd and this tremendous tribute to Underhard. They walk off even though their ball club trailing by five runs. Not only sad that scene because he's lost tonight, but when you judge that picture, will he be able to come back at all? Doug Bear will come in, and Cott is coming in. Doug Bear was loosening up Jim Cott there. So it'll be Jim Cott, five to nothing, and Cott will take all the time he needs with the injury. We'll be right back after these messages. I've got an unfair advantage over these guys. My looks? Are you kidding? I've got the Gillette Atra. They don't. It's got the advantage of a pivoting head. Atra's better than twin blade razors that don't pivot. See, they don't always stay on my beard. But my Atra pivots to keep both blades on my beard longer. I get a better shave. See? Close. Comfortable. Get the Gillette Atra and get the Atra advantage. So who said life was fair? <laughs> According to a Prestone survey, 7 out of 10 cars on the road have rust in their radiators. Of these, almost half could look this bad. Any radiator could get this bad after just 10,000 miles driving on weak, neglected antifreeze. But look at the Prestone difference. Prestone, with its patented silicone silicate formula, forms a tough, protective barrier to lock out rust and corrosion. Be safe. Put in a fresh fill of Prestone now. Keep inside. Trust Prestone. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I have killed for my country. I have stolen for my church. You're going to be powerful. You're going to be rich. I've loved a woman. Father, I am a priest. Christopher Reeve. Monsignor. A Frankie Blonde's presentation. Rated R. Starts Friday, October 22nd at a selected theater near you. It's a World Series weekend on NBC Sports. Following the game, be ringside for a USBA title bout. Frank the Animal Fletcher battles James Hard Rock Green. Plus sumo wrestling from Japan. All on NBC Sports World. Tomorrow. Walking and I have had been pitching so brilliantly, holding this small hockey team down. Got ahead of Simmons. A tailing fastball down in the strike zone. Joaquin on the right knee. Bob Costas has gone down to the clubhouse. We'll have a report, as you see, he's in just tremendous pain, and Bob Costas will get us a report just as soon as he can. Underhar had made 78 pitches, 50 for strikes, was in complete control, but Simmons, the one hopper, and now it's Jim Cutt with one out, a base runner on it first, Jim Cott will come into the third ball game in this World Series. Not allowed to earn run a run, although in game number two, Cecil Cooper hit a player that drove home somebody else's run. He, he had an interesting comment, so and asked him about uh, Cott, about being in this World Series. He said, listen, I'm not like the rest of these. I've been in, I've been in one of these. I was 65. <laughs> and everyone had to kind of look 60. How many years ago was that? The Minnesota Twins. But he's just as... Spry at 43, the oldest ever pitch as a National Leaguer in the World Series. I think you might recall when you, Joe, and I were speaking up here when we showed Raleigh Fingers and tennis in the bullpen of those great Oakland ball clubs. There's a man that we overlooked a couple. Holtzman was one. But also Daryl Knowles, who one time pitched in all seven World Series games. And here's Cott, pitching three of four already at 43 years of age. Well, he has the pitching record of most years of service in the Major Leagues, 24. He's the only active Major Leaguer playing in his fourth decade. And right now, he's got Ogilvy with Simmons on him first. One man out. Cardinals leading 5-0 in the bottom of the seventh. It's a strike. Now, Hernandez at first base playing behind the runner, Simmons. I'll see if the strategy of Herzog... The shooter down there to bear will let him pitch. Three of the five scheduled hitters are left-handed. Of course, he might get money up for Howell with the eight spot. It's that sidearm curveball. 
saw him in the lobby. I said, where'd you come up with that roundhouse American Legion curve? He said, that's exactly where I got it. That's what it is. Good competitor. One ball, two strikes. Since he dropped down to the side in spring training this year, he is throwing the ball harder than he did. Well, almost when he was a rookie. In fact, when he was a rookie with the old Washington Senators, he did not throw quite sidearm, a little bit higher, but he threw just this way. One man out. We outside. Two balls and two strikes to count. Oglevy, line to right in the second inning, was out on strikes in the fourth inning. Now you see Hernandez behind the runner. He got him on strikes. Oglevy called out on strikes. Caught. Gets out number two. Well, we saw Andohar to some right-handed hitters come down from the side and make a few of them buckle their knees. We'll show you Jim Cott from the stretch. Come from down. Sidewinder. He gets Oglevy to buckle a little bit. He almost, he steps a little bit crossfire toward first base. You notice that follow through, and after winning, what, 15, 16 Golden Gloves, he was right in position for a comebacker. So here is Gorman Thomas. He popped up his last time up, struck out in the second. He was really disgusted. He just threw his bat so far and hit the back of the screen here. There's the strike. Hernandez, they got the shift on. There are three infielders to the second base side. There you see him. With Hernandez playing behind the runner Simmons with his lead, he gets off much farther to try and protect that second base. So he's almost at second base. One ball and one strike. Thomas is hurting a bit, so Hernandez is getting way over there, knowing that Thomas really can't get down that line with good speed. One and one to count, two outs. Look at him breaking off. Almost hits him, it's inside. Joe, there's only one man I've ever seen play first base in baseball who could play that far off the back in any situation. He's in the ballpark tonight. Dick Power. Saw him down there. He's doing some broadcast back to his home country. He might have been as good a first baseman as I had ever seen. Watch Hernandez get off. Foul back. Two balls and two strikes, you count. Two outs. Jim Cott replacing Andujar, who was hit by the smash off the bat of Ted Simmons. Five to nothing to score. Cardinals are out in front. A three-run homer by McGee in the fifth. His second home run in the seventh. Gave the Cardinals the fifth run. Outside. Three and two. This Milwaukee club. They can score in a hurry. It's five nothing. The on deck man, Roy Howell. There you see him. Line drive, left field. It's a base hit. Simmons stops at second. Now what we might see is some more strategy take place with Howell scheduled a left-hander. Whitey Herzog will probably wait until Don Money is announced, a right-handed hitter, and when the announcement is made, we've got a chance to see Bear. He goes Herzog, he's going to wait for the announcement. They've announced Money, so Herzog will make the move and probably go to the right-hander. So there are two outs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. There you see them, Suter and Doug Bear. And we haven't, there's been no indication somebody's coming in. I would think it'd be Suter the way he's throwing it, but Bear said, no, it's me. It's 5 nothing, and we've got a pitching change. Jim Codd trots off. So we have a break in the action here. And we're waiting for the news from the clubhouse. As soon as we get it, Bob Costas is there. We'll report it to you. Andahar hit by that smash. So we will be back right after these messages. If you want a typewriter that erases, you can get the correcting Selectric or the Xerox Memory Writer. 
If you want one that erases and sets columns automatically, you can get their Model 50 or the Xerox Memory Writer. If you want one that also has a memory for paragraphs, you can get their Model 60 or the Xerox Memory Writer. But if you want one that erases two lines automatically and has about 30% more memory for under $1,360, you can only get the Xerox 610 Memory Writer. <laughs> In 1955, a rebel named James Dean became an international film legend and introduced Levi's original blue jeans to a whole new generation. Since then, we've kind of redefined the word jeans, if not the man who wears them. Now there are Levi's moving on jeans in styles you might not even call jeans in colors that aren't even blue. We call them moving on because we figure the guy who wears them is in a bit more of a hurry. It lasts forever. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Here's the report from the Cardinal Clubhouse as we have it right now, and it's really not very conclusive. Joaquin Andahar was hit just beneath the right knee. Painful. Whether or not anything's broken, we don't know. It appears they're getting set to take x-rays. We haven't been able to talk with Dr. Stan Lund and the Cardinal team physician yet. But as soon as he comes out of the Cardinal clubhouse, we hope to have him on for a few words to describe exactly what happened to the Cardinal starter who was pitching a brilliant game until the ball hit him. We'll go back upstairs now to Joe and Tony and Dick. Okay, Bob Costas. Well, it sounds like the preliminary report is good news. And as soon as we get a more detailed report, we certainly will bring it to you. Doug Bear is a new pitcher. Bear who came out in game number two. The Brewers have been threatening. He relieved Cott. With a man out, two outs, and then he retired six consecutive Brewers before Souter came on after a double, and he picked him up and finished the Brewers off. Well, Don Money will be facing Doug Bear. They've just announced that the press box will give you this report. Andahar hit on the ball and just below the right knee, as reported by Bob Costas, and team... Doctor Stan London reports he's in stable condition, taking the Mount Sinai for x-rays to determine whether or not it is fractured. High, and it's ball one. This crowd really coming alive now, and Porter wants to have a word with his pitcher. Five to nothing, and Money, who has been a very productive hitter. There in case you this. Game number two, he's going over the signs with Simmons at second base, and they're going to roll the signs over. Ozzie Smith going over, talking, what are we going to use so I know how to position myself, know what pitches are going on. Bear with a sneaky fastball through very hard the other night. Good overhand curve with a tough slider. Money had 16 home runs in 1982. 352 average with runners in scoring position. Up there with two outs, a pinch hitter. Or Roy Howell. The ball's no strikes. Two balls and a strike on Don Money. Ed Simmons is on at second base. Gorman Thomas is on at first. Five nothing to score. Bottom of the seventh. Outside, three and one. He doesn't look comfortable working on that mound, does he? He's staggering as he delivers. I just wonder if it was that switch of signs. I used to always hate to do that. You should have it set in your mind because you want your pitcher to concentrate on the batter, not whether he has to add, subtract, second sign, last sign, and all that other stuff. Three and one, this man, Money, is a good fastball hitter. He can turn anybody's fastball around. He fouls it back. 
you know, well, he's very simply, I always felt as a catcher, when you bring a relief pitcher, you don't want him to go to thinking, you want him to go to throwing. Coming off a strange bullpen mound he's ever seen onto a strange county stadium mound. So it's three balls, two strikes, two outs. Base runners will be off. Listen to this crowd. They want some action. And here comes Whitey Herzog. The bases are loaded, and he's going for his eraser, Bruce Souter. Whitey says, good play ball players will make a good manager. A good bullpen will make you a great manager. And that's what Souter can do, and here he comes. Like he said, when I was in Kansas City, we had the great teams. We got in the league championship series, kept getting beat by the Yankees. The reason was I didn't have a Souter, or I didn't have a Quisenberry that either. So Bruce Souter will come in. Bases are loaded, 5-0 to score, two outs. We'll be right back. It began as a concept called the total car. It has become the totally new Ford LTD. Reshaped, refined, totally redesigned with new comfort, smoothness. With new gas-filled shocks for a remarkable ride. New Ford LTD for 1983. The total car. A totally new driving experience. Have you driven a Ford lately? When you're a big guy like me, people always want to see just how strong you are. But after this arm works, this arm always relaxes with light beer from Miller. The light's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it tastes great. What I like about it is it's less filling. So when you're in a hot match like this, you can't afford to get filled up. You have the time? Yeah. About 8.30. Yeah, thanks. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. Next. In the world of action watches, trust Seiko for advanced dual display technology even 300 feet beneath the sea. Trust Seiko for timepieces that display any of six functions with a turn of a vessel. For alarm chronographs that even measure your pulse rate. For the world's most advanced technology, people trust Seiko more than any other watch. Get the best of Seiko watches, the best of Seiko clocks, only where you see this sign. Bond's Moonlight is a model. Gorgeous girl. And uncovers an extortion plot that could cost a young model her life on all new tips Sunday. Bruce Souter, the all-time National League save leader, 194. And he inherits a bases loaded two-out situation. In game number two, he faced eight hitters. Two scratch infield hits, one by Moore up the plate now and one by Molitor. This crowd of 56,566 haven't had much to cheer about and he just talked to the man of the uh, second base umpire about going to his mouth and they'll tell you what's happening. Listen to them and watch them. stands might be playable he makes the catch what a play he made right in front of the dugout on the very first pitch Moore fouls out look at Huff Kittle that really says it all over fell that wind started drifting the ball back into the field of play and some of the players went over to help and you might see a little bit of ball right here he makes an excellent play the bench really reacted to that, so at the end of seven full innings, the score, St. Louis 5, Milwaukee nothing. Today you need an oil this good, you need Quaker State. When your engine's this new, you got to protect your investment. You need an oil this good. When your engine's this old, it needs extra care. You need an oil this good. Small engines work so hard, they demand an oil this good. These motor oils are refined exclusively from Pennsylvania grade crude. Quaker State is so good, it's America's best-selling motor oil. New cars, old cars, small cars. Today, you need Quaker State. You need an oil this good. 
The Yankees' Willie Randolph, he does it all. Pro photographer Fred Conrad, he catches it all with his Canon AE-1 program. More advanced to capture Willie's sheer grace at second base. The AE-1 program, more camera to follow Willie all the way home. Hey, can I try your Canon? Sure, it's simple. In sun or shade, it's a snap to use. Uh -huh. The Canon AE-1 program, so advanced, it's simple and more of both. These families are learning about home computers. The family with the Atari home computer is learning... Spanish, German, French, Italian. The other... No foreign languages. The Atari family is learning... Three programs teach us to program. The other... We've only one. And while the Atari family learns to play centipede star ins and soon... E.T. The other learned... We made a mistake. Over a thousand programs featuring the world's most popular games. But sorry, only with Atari. It's a World Series weekend on NBC Sports. Following the game, be ringside for a USBA title bout. Frank the Animal Fletcher battles James Hard Rock Green, plus sumo wrestling from Japan, all on NBC Sports World, tomorrow. Milwaukee's County Stadium. And we've got a 5-0 ball game. Vukovic will be facing Tommy Herr, Obergfeldt, and Keith Hernandez. Cardinals really have not hit that many balls hard off Bukovic, except for Lonnie Smith, who has two extra base hits, two, a double and a triple, and McGee has absolutely crushed two balls, a three-run home run and a two-run home run. Or a single home run. Let me out. There's a strike to Tommy Herr. Herr popped the shortstop in the first, bounced to the second baseman in the third, and in the fifth. One ball and one strike. Her's uh, new son, Aaron Her, and I asked if uh, after Henry said, no, we just like the name, but not a bad name, Aaron Her. Sounds like a ball player. Two balls and a strike. Beat Bukovic. Gantner, nicely to his right, and there's one away. Gantner got the kind of hop you don't see an artificial surface, which is why he had to hustle to get over in front of it. He would try to run over and glide over and feel it with one hand, he probably would have missed it. You can do it on the artificial turf, but not here. Obrick fell the batter, and here's the catch he made. Not only watch the catch, but catch some of the reaction. Look at Red Shandy's mouth open, and everybody applauding him. It was a key play for the Cardinals as it retired the side. The base is loaded. 1-0 pitch. High fly ball. Shallow left field. Yount going out. Ogilvy coming in. He makes the play. Benji's really hurting Tony. You see when he has to reach for a ball. I'm sure it's, it's hurting him when he tries to swing the bat. So there are two away. Nobody on, and here is Keith Hernandez. He bounced out to the second baseman in the first, fouled to the left fielder in the fourth, and bounced out again to the second baseman. I wonder what his father's been telling. His father's here, was in St. Louis, of course, former professional baseball player. He's Keith's hitting coach. It's the ball hard, nice play by Young. The throw, they get him. And Hernandez can't buy a base hit as Yon took the hard smash and really made it look easy and gets him at first base. Well, we've seen a little bit of a clinic so far in these three games. Ozzy Smith with his dives in game one. And Robin Yount, nice play right here. So it's 5-0 St. Louis as we go into the bottom half of the eighth inning. Nowhere else can you get sesame seed bun and toasted and topped with that special sauce and McDonald's ads and cheese with pickles and onions. And you won't be bad. Our great big Mac, our special way to say you deserve a break today at McDonald's. Oh, at it. McDonald's. Sauce. At McDonald's. It's, it's our big Mac. Time. When you ship air cargo, time is everything. 
That's why Flying Tigers delivers everything. Not just small packages. In fact, no matter what size your shipment is, we'll pick it up, fly it, and deliver it overnight, virtually anywhere in the country, on time. Or you don't pay. Small, medium, or large. Call Flying Tigers. It's on time, or it's on us. Tomorrow on Different Strokes, Arnold plays Cupid, but his arrow goes astray. Who you talking about, Lisa? And then Ricky shakes up the household to get Dad's attention. Silver Spoon. Jim Gantner leads it off here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Suter with no one on, pitching off the stretch. And he fires the first one, and it's strike one. Interesting to see as these hitters see Suter for the second time. There are some hitters who will move closer to the pitcher's rubber, try and get, in fact, move up on the plate, try and get that split-fingered fastball before it breaks. Sooner is smart enough that he can adjust and throw it even lower. Ask the third base umpire. No, so it's one ball and one strike. Milwaukee Brewers, few shutouts in 1982. Only team in the major leagues to only be shut out once, and that was by the Minnesota Twins. Trailing 5 nothing. One ball and two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. Bottom of the eighth. Shut out only once in 218 games. The Milwaukee Brewers and Bukovic was the loser in that one. Left field. Smith coming there. He makes the play. Shut out of the Brewers by young left-hander from the Twins, O'Connor. Relieved by Davis. Ron Davis. So here's Paul Molitor. He flied to center field in the first. He struck out in the third. Flied to center field in the sixth. It isn't fair to say he flied to center field that first time up. It didn't look like he had a home run. He hit that ball hard. But McGee was able to haul it in. Now you see the pitch from that angle, Joe. And we talked about how he throws it two nights ago from the hitters point of view why it's so difficult to hit perhaps we could pursue that a bit Tony the fact that it looks like a fastball all the way you think, you think we could hit if those guys couldn't or can't <laughs> no, I'm not saying you could hit it I'm just and saying an appreciation of what it must be like to be a hitter facing that thing. and if the Hall, future Hall of Famer and signing order winner Tom Seaver can't explain what it does that's how great this guy is uh, the ball breaks so much nobody else throws anything like it probably as devastating a pitch as there is in baseball a lot of people try and throw it Talk about the Gossage fastball of Ryan and the Nico knuckleball, and that's the fingered fastball, and that pitch was something else. Two strikes on Molitor. A foul ball. That was a fastball. Well, when you have one of those exotic pitches, a knuckleball, a fork ball, a split fingered fastball, it makes every other pitch effective because you're always looking for it. And you get a hitter to think, and he's going to end up with no for four and a headache. The incredible thing about it, as much as it breaks, that he can still throw strikes when he has to. He gets a lot of balls swung at that are not strikes. I mean, those balls start at waist high. By the time you swing it down at the ankle, that's how much it drops. You're talking about two and a half, three feet. That's a lot of feet. Well, you throw a, a knuckleball or some of the others, you'll at least be able to pick up a rotation or lack thereof. But they all say it just looks like a fastball all the way. You can't pick up any clues on the pitch. Here's the one-two pitch. Fouled off. He yeah. is the, 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 the tremendous arm speed, too, Joe. You're swinging not only at the break on the pitch and missing it, but you're swinging at the hand and the ball's not there yet. Did you stew Miller a little bit? A little bit. When Barry Foote caught him in Chicago, he said it looked like a slider, acted like a fastball, and it was neither one. One two pitch. Misses. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Bottom of the eighth inning. St. Louis five, Milwaukee nothing. Cardinals with five hits, two of them home runs, both by Willie McGee, one a three run homer. It's popped up, and Porter off with the mass. Foul territory makes the play. There are two outs. It brings up Robin Young. Down is over three, flying to right, bounced to the second baseman, and hit into a double play in the sixth.
Cardinals got three runs in the fifth and got two in the seventh. Doubled by Smith. Ball one. He moved to third as Orge was safe on an air, and then McGee had a three-run homer. And it was a triple by Smith. He came around to score when the throw from Ganton and the relay throw went into the dugout, and then McGee hit another homer. That's been the scoring. Two balls, no strikes. Meanwhile, Joe, the top three in the Milwaukee order, 15 for 30 coming in. They're 0 for 10 tonight. There's the strike. Two balls and one strike on Robin Yaw. But when you have a pitcher like that, all you have to do is a catcher. Remember what fingers you put down. Three and one. Inter yeah. Interesting challenges come in these situations where you get a yount who's a low ball hitter with a low ball pitcher. Let's see how they play it. Outside, Yount is on. They're looking for base runners, and the Brewers have one. And that brings up Cecil Cooper. Cooper bounced out to the second baseman in the first, line to center in the fourth, and fly to center in the seventh. Five nothing, St. Louis leading, bottom of the eighth. Strike one. Base runners, Robin Young, C. Hernandez with a five-run lead, playing behind him. Well hit, deep to right field. This could be two. It is out of here. Listen to the crowd. Simmons. Cooper, who had 32 home runs in the regular season, has just given the Brewers a two-run homer. Simmons takes a low, ball one. And that's got to be a big shot in the arm, not so much for the scoreboard, but they've been able to break through on Superman. I think that's where the Brewer confidence and looseness comes from. When they had to win that final game, 163rd game, actually, against Baltimore, they got the home runs. When they had to come back two down to California, they know they can score runs in bunches. Hernandez takes the high hopper from Ted Simmons, steps on the back, ends the eighth inning, but the Brewers score two, and at the end of eight full innings, it's St. Louis five, Milwaukee two, and there's a swing that gave the Brewers their two runs. All right, maybe I wasn't the greatest player of all time, but fans, they forgive and forget. Uh, when I go in here, they'll be buying me my favorite beer, light beer from Miller. You bought the Euchre? Yeah, how you doing? Oh, these fans, I love them. They know us ex-big leaguers drink light because it's less filling and it tastes great. Well, can't keep the gang waiting. <laughs> the fans are always joking. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And less. Wow, they're having a good time in there. You're looking at the king of 4x4 four four pickups, Ford. And now announcing the heir to the throne, Ford's new size Ranger 4x4. Four now watch it tackle this monster mountain of boulders. The tough 83 Rangers independent front suspension claws up and over these boulders independently. And this totally new small 4x4 gets gas mileage this high. The new size Ranger 4x4. Once again, tough Ford 4x4s end up at the top of the heap. America's truck, tough Ford Ranger. Our 
our NBC crew following Joaquin Andujar. This is Andujar leaving County Stadium. Appears to be in a good mood. Still in his uh, baseball jersey. On his way to Mount Sinai Hospital. This uh, tape just taken uh, an inning or so ago. And the reports we get, the early reports from Dr. Stan London, who is accompanying Andujar, are good. Are good. He feels that not only is he in a good mental and emotional state that it does not appear to be a serious injury. Andujar, who was brilliant, six and a third innings, no runs and three hits, and stands to be the winner if Suter can get the final three outs of the game. Here is George Hendrick against Vukovic, and it's ball one on Hendrick. One ball and one strike to count. So if you project that out, the status of Andujar, the off day in there, go to game seven if there should be a game seven. If he is well, he might be the pitcher. Two balls and one strike on Hendrick. He had a base hit in the second inning, a controversial base hit, and then walked in the fourth, bounced out. Two balls and two strikes. Five to two to score. See Lewis out in front, looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth. Oglevy, Thomas, and Money. Left field. Oglevy waiting. Makes the play. One out. Right after a game three of this 1982 World Series. Don't forget, later tonight, it's The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. Then it's SCTV and all the day's news on NBC Overnight. All following your local news, except for the West Coast and most mountain time stations, where they'll be seen at their regular times. So stay with us. Right here on NBC, and we'll see you again tomorrow, 1 o'clock Eastern Time for Game 4. We've had a an interference on the catcher, and George Hendrick was awarded first base because the bat was tipped by the catcher Simmons, so it'll go as an error on Simmons. Hi, right, ball one. Interesting ruling. Really had that ball fall in for a base hit. Uh, he had a choice of taking the hit. As it was, it was caught, what looked like an out. An E2. Now Porter going to get some signs straightened out with a one ball, no strike count with Chuck Hiller, the third base coach who came over with Whitey Herzog within a Kansas City. See if we can pick up the pitch from Bukovic on the fly ball, the short left field, how the interference takes place. You couldn't see it on that. I couldn't either. Couldn't see it on that at all. Usually when a pitcher changes speeds on his own, he forces you to kind of fakes you out as a catcher, and that's how you end up tipping the bat, but you couldn't see anything on the replay. And Bukovic is that type pitcher where he'll change speeds on his own. Quarter squares around, bunts in the air, Cooper's got a play. Games are not yet gone in this 82 World Series. We've seen Ozzie Smith with brilliant play, Robin Yount, McGee, and one more time by Cecil Cooper. He made a good play diving to his right in game number two. Might have saved some trouble. Good camera shots, guys. And we should point out, uh, most of the fans know, but when you hear what sounds like a boo in the background, they're just chanting coo for Cecil Cooper. Here's Lonnie Smith, who's been one of the big heroes for the Cardinals. It is outside, ball one. It was Lonnie Smith who got it started in the fifth after Porter was called out on strikes with the double. Moved to third on an air. Ball hit by Orange. And then scored on McGee's home run. Henrik on it first. Tomorrow afternoon for Milwaukee Brewer, product Dave LaPointe, a left-hander, will go against Moose Haas, who is... Pretty pitched a good ball game against the Angels. Fly ball deep to left field. Going back is Ogilvy. He's got room. He makes the play at the warning track. So Lonnie Smith flies to Ogilvy in left field. And there are two outs. For the night, Lonnie Smith appears to have his batting eye back. Pretty sharp ground ball in the second. Double score run, triple score run. Ball was just missed to left. The wind may have drifted that a little bit more shallow. Kept it in. 
It's got to be encouraging for Whitey Herzog. His outfield starting tonight combined was 0 for 18, and they have all five of the Cardinal hits tonight. There's his strike. I almost have to snicker before I say this. They keep records on everything in the World Series. Do you know that that was the fifth time in World Series history that there was catcher's interference? And they've got a whole list of these. Players involved, high, ball one. 1925, Roger Peckinpah, Washington. Earl Smith was the catcher who interfered. Bud Matheny in 43, Walker Cooper the catcher. Ken Boyer in 64, Elston Howard was the catcher. 70, Pete Rose, L. Rod Henrich. And tonight, <laughs> Simmons and George Hendrick. Well, I'm really glad to learn that. <laughs> I know one thing. When you say 64, the late great Cardinal Ken Boyer, I can still see his grand slam home run. What a memorable moment in World Series history. Winding around the foul pole in Yankee Stadium. Courageous man. You see the black armband on the left sleeves. You see the Dane Orge in this particular case. Great story. One ball and two strikes with two outs. Hendrick at first. Top of the ninth. Cardinals leading five to two. High and tight. Two and two the count. Two two pitch by Vukovic. Foul back by Orge. So this, if the score stands up and with a shooter out there, you don't expect to, to batter him around. This is a Cardinal team that lost 10 to nothing, then got behind in game number two, three to nothing, came back and won it. And then to go on the road, game three of the World Series, it's a psychological lift to beat a ball club in their home ballpark. It's one of these kind of fans. They haven't beaten them yet, but the shooter out there, uh, it's, it's close. Pulled down the line, it is a foul ball. Except that these Milwaukee Brewers, Tony, they came within an eyelash of losing to Baltimore, and they won it. They lost the first two games to California, and they won it. They seem to take themselves to the wall every time, don't they? I talked to one fan, he said, it's just been an emotional yo-yo all year long, up and down. He said, I've come to games where they're... We get a 10-run lead in the third inning, and by the sixth inning, it's 15-10. We're losing, then we win 16-15. So it's 5-2 now. They're trailing. Fouled off again. You saw that uh, graphic that Bob Rogers, who was the skipper at the start of the year, and the losing record, his team had fallen into sixth place in early June, seven and a half games out of first when the move was made by Harry Dalton to Name, name Keen, the manager. Down the right field line. This one is a fair ball. It bounces. It is touched by a fan, so Hendrick will stop at third. He's going to come in around, but he'll stop at third. They'll run him back because it was handled by a fan, a one-hopper, and George, <laughs> he's smiling because he was going all out. Watch this. You'll see it. The ball bounces in clearly. It's a ground rule double, this particular one. Man interference. Left up to the judgment of the umpire how far the runners would have gotten. I think Whitey's going to argue the point that... Uh, you bet. He is, saying, he is saying with Hendrick running, he was going to score. That is judgment. Why are you setting him back? I bet he loses the argument. Oh, I would doubt it, but it's a judgment call. And anytime you go out and make an argument with an umpire, he said, well, in my judgment, I said, okay, I understand now. He's going now. Kibler, Whitey wants Kibler to go out and ask... The right field foul line upper, umpire Bill Haller. We're also talking to Davey Phillips. Whitey's now probably pointing out, hey, look who's running. If you're going to use judgment, Dane Orange is not the fastest runner, but George Hendrick can let it out once he gets going. And in my judgment, I think he just scored, but you know whose judgment's going to win out, don't you? Well, I think he would have tried to score him, don't you? I, I think did. Killer was going to wave him home and oh, give it did. a shot. He did. He had him wave. He was looking like a windmill down at third base, Coach, and Hiller had him coming all the way. Well, you never know what the care might have done out there, but, of course, you can't anticipate that. The argument for Herzog's point of view being that with two outs, Hendrick was running all the way, and you can't just take for granted he's only going to get two bases. 
So here's Willie McGee now with the first base open. So let's see how they play it. They're going to put him on, I would imagine, and then go to Ozzie Smith. Well, that's kind of a shame. It'd be nice to see him swing the bat again. Kind of night he's had. I tell you, he's been very impressive in postseason play. He has 20 total bases and 20 at bats, a slugging percentage of a thousand, three home runs, two singles, two triples. So he's standing there, unlike Keith Hernandez, does an intentional pass. Keith Hernandez, after the first ball thrown, puts his bat in front of him, touching the ground with the barrel, and kind of leans on it. Willie Hernandez, I mean Willie McGee, is ready to go, isn't he? You make a mistake, pal. I'm going after it. I tell you, if I'd hit two home runs in the game, I'd be ready too. <laughs> So here is Ozzy Smith. Bases are loaded. There are two outs. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth, it's Oglevy, Thomas, and Money for Milwaukee. They're trailing by three. Simmons is kind of reminding this pitcher, hey, there are two outs. Let's bear down on this guy. we got to force it every base. Malter's come in close. Ozzy, he's such a good bat control man. With two outs, thinks he might drop him down. And it's ball one. One ball to count. 5-2 to score. Top of the ninth. Cardinals leading. Bases loaded. Full foul. One ball and one strike to count. 56,556 in the ballpark. There's Malter at third. Close in front of the bag. One one pitch. Outside. Two balls in the strike. Oz for Milwaukee tomorrow against LaPointe. High and it's ball three. Three and one. Two men out, base is loaded. Walked in. So it's six to two. Have to get Harvey Keen out of the dugout. Got to think of a guy like Vukovic, uh, probably tired. He's had some shoulder problems late in the season and was getting by a lot with breaking stuff and off-speed pitches. He's had a couple of cortisone shots in the shoulder and has struggled through a lot of pain. And you've got to watch out for him now again, like Andujar. As the series goes along, if it goes to six and seven, you could have the same pitching matchup in game seven, Andujar against Vukovic. So you, you get him to throw an extra inning or two of pitches, and determine what happens later on down the road. So Harvey Keene is going to make a pitching change here. Tommy Herr will be the batter. Cardinals six to two over Milwaukee. We're in the top of the ninth inning. All starting with the catcher's interference on Hendrick. Looked like an out to left field, a weak fly ball. It's like Bob McClure. That's who it is. It's Bob McClure who's coming in the left-hander. And of course the basis loaded walk is like trying to digest a, a meal you didn't like the night before because it was that particular situation that cost the Brewers in game two, the winning run score on a bases loaded walk in the Cardinal 5-4 victory. Well, Tom Seaver has been with us and he's been analyzing our, well, our game, mostly pitching. And Tom, what do you see? Well, looking at both sides, Joe, and, and really looking back and looking ahead, the bottom of the seventh inning, Whitey Herzog had to bring Doug Bear in. Abrat chose to bring Doug Bear in instead of a Bruce Suter. And I think you have to look a little bit ahead at that point. The score was five to nothing, and I think Whitey would have liked to get out of the game with Doug Bear pitching instead of bringing, bringing Bruce Suter in. Tomorrow, an early ball game. Now, how much is this work that Bruce is throwing tonight to? It'll be two and a third innings if he gets out of the next inning. It's going to affect him tomorrow. I think that's the kind of pitching changes that were on Whitey's mind when he chose to bring Bear in instead of Suter in the seventh inning. So, McClure is the new pitcher, and we'll be right back after these messages. A middleweight brawl.
Tonight, the animal Fletcher takes on James Hardlock Green. The USBA title is on the line. The action fast and furious. The styles hard-hitting and relentless. The impact guaranteed. Plus, gentle giants from the Far East share their ancient traditions. Watch Fletcher take on Green and the timeless battle of the Titans on NBC Sports World. It's a World Series weekend. McClure continuing, continuing his warm-up tosses. Vukovic made 122 pitches, 59 for strikes. Kind of a telltale statistic there. So, McClure will be facing Tommy Herr. Here in game three, the Cardinals. They've just picked up another run. The base on balls with the bases loaded, so it's a 6-2 to two ball game. Base is still loaded. Tommy Herr batting right-handed, a 201 average, left-handed, 294. There's the strike. Herr is the kid that during the last three weeks of the regular season probably got as many big base hits for this Cardinal team during the pennant stretch than anybody on this ball club. Here, Hernandez, Lonnie Smith, Hendricks. He was a big key for them, talking to Mike Shannon, the Cardinal broadcaster. Ground ball. Gantner has it. He'll go to first in time. So that ends the inning. But the Cardinals pick up another run. It's St. Louis 6, Milwaukee 2 as we go into the bottom half of the ninth inning. And two up, it'll be Oglevy, Gorman Thomas, and Don Money. NBC Sports, the leader in innovative sports television. We do it like no one else does, and no one else can. NBC Sports presents a full day of sports on Sunday. Big day tomorrow, and then on Sunday, NFL 82 will kick off the day. Special one-hour edition. All the latest on the NFL strike. Then it's an NBC Sports special. Starts at 1.30 Eastern time. Championship NASCAR racing the Charlotte 500. Plus live boxing, James Bubba Bushimi against Livingston Bramble, a 10-round lightweight battle. Capping off the day, Game 5 of the World Series. All right here on NBC. But ben Oglevy will lead it off here. He is 0 for 3. And it's ball 1. Who left fielder is David Green. He's replaced Lonnie Smith. One ball and one strike. Nobody on, nobody out. Six to two, St. Louis leading Milwaukee. We're in the bottom of the ninth. Hernandez boots it, and Oakley is on. It's an error on Hernandez, and the Brewers have something going. Let's look at it again. Hernandez gets over on time. I'm not going to tell how a gold glove first baseman should do it, but maybe he should have backhanded. I guess I did just try and tell him. He got over in time to try and block that goal, not guarding the line with the lead, as you might see late in the ball game in a close game. He is so darn aggressive. I know where he played some first baseman, many would not have gotten to that ball. So Oakley is on. Here is Gorman Thomas. ball on. Thomas 
One for three, struck out in the second, pop to the second baseman, and single to left in the seventh. They have the shift on for Gorman Thomas. He pulls one foul, hit hard. Thirty-nine home runs for Gorman Thomas, Ogilvy with thirty-four, Cooper with thirty-two. There's the shift. Out to the left side with it back to the warning track. Well hit, way back. Listen to the reaction. Oh he boy! Did it. What a catch he made, Willie McGee. Willie McGee with the bat and with the glove has been a one-man show tonight. The potential of McGee unlimited. We saw him go deep to the fence to Rob Mowder. This ball is over the yellow line in the seats. Might have gotten the Brewers back into it. Look at him time that ball. Great leaping ability. That's like a basketball player going up for a rebound off the fast break. Don Money, the batter. And we have to vote for the outstanding player. And I'll tell you right now that tonight's NBC Miller High Life outstanding player of the game, you're looking at him, Willie McGee. He just nailed it down with that catch. And Miller High Life is happy to present a check for $1,000 in the name of Willie McGee to the Special Olympics. And to make that kind of catch in a ballpark that he has never played in before makes it even more outstanding. That's really a good point. Plus two home runs for McGee and a minus one for the other side. One ball, one strike, one out. Don Money the batter. Outside, two and one to count. Now, Willie Meek Key's the kid who the Yankees had in their farm system for about five years, and then when they got the big Winfield contract, they didn't protect him on the 40-man roster. So trade was made Sykes from the game. Money takes him, and it's strike two. Two balls and two strikes. Second baseman Tommy Herr was way over to Eddie Schiff, even with money, and now they've just moved him. He's only two steps to the second base side of the bag. Cardinals leading by four. He got him, struck him out. Down money, called out on strikes. So there are two away. Look at the fastball he got him with. Because we had uh, Andujar charged with a ball earlier for going to the mouth while he was on the pitching circle. And what they're allowing the pitchers to do because it's cold is to blow on their hand. And of course, if you're off the pitching circle, you can even look at it, lick your hand if you want to wipe it off afterwards. Suter didn't exactly do it that time. Kelly Moore takes a strike. Base runner at first is Oglevy. Most of that is the man on the mound. Foul tip. Yo, Joe, Suter's uh, career stats are interesting. About six and a half years in the Major League's Cubs and the Cardinals. He strikes out about one per inning. About 560 some innings, but before this year, this year in the 102 innings pitched in the regular season, he struck out just 61. So he's quite a bit below his lifetime strikeout per inning average this year. Here's a two strike pitch. Foul ball. Count remains at strike two. Two out, six to two. St. Louis leading. Bottom of the ninth inning. Tomorrow, one o'clock Eastern time, Moose Haas against LaPointe. Who messes around with the split fingered fastball? A point with an excellent changeup. We'll see that tomorrow, though. What a remarkable temperament he has. He left the home end tonight. He ordinarily doesn't. Be able to come into those pressure situations time in and time out is extraordinary. Foul back once again. The count remains at strike two. He just tried to punch that ball to the opposite field as we look at the Cardinal bench. Whitey Herzog, Red Shane Deans, Hub Kittle. Suter taught the split finger fastball by the late Fred Martin in the minor leagues when they thought his career was over. About ready to get released. And presently, 
mechanics and he gets messed up. He uses a Red Sox minor league pitching coach, Mike Roar. This could be the ball game. McGee coming in. He makes the catch. That's and that ends the ball game. And so Willie McGee, and it was the Willie McGee night as Ozzie Smith, Tommy Herr, youngster with two home runs, one and three run homer, a sensational catch to take a home run away from Gorman Thomas. And the final score, St. Louis 6-2 over Milwaukee. And perhaps a bittersweet victory for the St. Louis Cardinals, losing Joaquin Andujar, although the reports are good from the hospital. Andujar pitching brilliantly, but hit in the knee on a shot off the bat of catcher Ted Simmons. But on the plus side, Willie McGee, the rookie, two home runs, four RBIs, to spark the Cardinals to a key 6-2-1 in this pivotal third game, and McGee capped it off by robbing a home run from Gorman Thomas. So game three of the 1982 World Series has been brought to you by Life Beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by Gillette Atra Razor, the twin blade razor that pivots for a close, comfortable shave. And by Atari, the leader in home video games for fun your whole family can share. Final score once again, 6-2, St. Louis over Milwaukee. Remember, Saturday is Game 4, 79th World Series, starting 1 o'clock right here on NBC Sports, the leader in innovative sports television. Now stay tuned for tonight's show starring Johnny Carson, following your local news except on the West Coast, most mountain time stations, where it will be seen at its regular time right here on NBC. Promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. We serve more of this land's top 100 business centers than any other airline. Fly the friendly skies. A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by Hilton. When American business hits the road, American business stops at Hilton, America's business address. This has been a presentation of NBC Sports, the leader in innovative sports television.